Hello everyone and welcome back to another video by Simply Learn. In this video, we will see a comprehensive full course on ReactJS. ReactJS is an open source JavaScript library used to build user interfaces. Facebook created it and it has since become a popular choice for front-end development. In this full course, we will cover all the basics of ReactJS from components and states to routing and APIs. We will also discuss the interview questions and two interesting projects on ReactJS that can help you land a great job in the field of front-end development. Let's dive in and look at the agenda for this full course. First, we'll see what is ReactJS. After that, we'll see what is ReactJS components. Moving ahead, we'll see nesting components, higher order components, and then React props. After that, we'll see React methods, which is very important. After that, we'll see React projects, and one of the project is Instagram clone. After that, we'll see React 18 new features. Moving ahead, we'll see Angular versus ReactJS, and by the end of this full course, you will learn ReactJS interview questions and answers that are very important for you to crack an interview. But before that, if you want to become a software developer, consider the course on full stack web development, mean stack by simply learn and master those necessary skills. You can also consider a postgraduate program by Caltech in full stack web development. Check out the link in the description box for more details. You can also call on the numbers that are given below and know more about the program. So without further ado, Let's get into this full course. In today's video, we'll be learning all about ReactJS. So let's jump in and see what's in store for us. So we'll be covering topics on what is React, why React, features of React, React prerequisites, and its industry trends. Let's go ahead and begin with what is React. React is a JavaScript library used to build fast and interactive user interfaces for both web and mobile applications. Now, one thing that makes React extremely powerful is the fact that it's open source. Any user can access its source code, modify it, and enhance it. In a typical model view controller architecture, React defines the view part of the application. It is also responsible for how the app looks and feels. Fun fact, React was built by Jordan Walkey, an engineer at Facebook. Now, let's go ahead and see how React works in real time. Consider a typical web application, say Instagram. The entire UI of the web page is divided into several components. We have the search component, a profile description component, stories component, and a post list component. These components make the code easier to debug and always remain discrete. Components also make development and maintenance of web applications faster as multiple developers can work simultaneously on different components of the same web application. Now let's see why React is so popular these days. React helps in creation of dynamic web applications. It also provides performance enhancements. Now there are several performance enhancements like virtual DOM and one-way data binding. We'll learn about these topics a little later in the video. React uses reusable components. Now this helps decrease the development time. React involves unidirectional flow of data. React also has a small learning curve. Compared to other frameworks like Angular, React is much easier to learn. React can also be used for mobile applications. React recently released an extension called React Native that is used for developing mobile applications that are cross-compatible. It also has dedicated tools for easy debugging. Now let's dive in to the features of React. First, let's understand JSX. JSX is a syntax extension to JavaScript. Using JSX, we can add HTML to the JavaScript file. All coding in React is done using JSX. It also helps in making the code easier to understand and debug. Ultimately, JSX is a combination of JavaScript and HTML. Now let's consider a small example. Const simple here is a JavaScript notation. H1 tags indicate HTML. Again, the semicolon indicates JavaScript. Note that the semicolon is not mandatory. However, it's a good practice to include it. Moving on, the next feature is Virtual DOM. DOM, which is an acronym for Data Object Model, actually defines how documents are accessed and manipulated in a web page. It represents the entire structure of the web page in the form of a tree. Now let's see how this actually works. React creates a virtual DOM that is the exact copy of the real DOM. Traditionally, whenever something changes in the web application, all objects in the real DOM are updated. This makes it extremely slow. 
Let's see how React counters this. Now consider two objects whose states have been changed. React now compares the virtual DOM with the virtual DOM snapshot that was taken right before the update. By comparing the new virtual DOM with the pre-update version, React figures out exactly which virtual DOM objects have changed. Now React only updates those objects on the virtual DOM. This makes a big difference when it comes to speed. Coming to the next feature, performance. React uses virtual DOM. As discussed earlier, virtual DOM impacts the speed of the web applications. We also took an example of Instagram and learned how multiple components can affect the development time. They help improve performance drastically. The next feature is one-way data binding. This means information flows in only one direction. One-way data binding is specifically used when information is displayed and not updated. Remember that the components of React are functional in nature. That is, they receive information through arguments and pass information via their return values. The next important feature is extensions. React has many extensions that we can use to create full-fledged front-end applications. It provides server-side rendering, which means that the application is rendered on the server rather than in the browser. React Native, which is a React extension, is used for developing mobile applications. There are many other extensions that React provides for every scenario in web development. Now let's look at a few of them. React Native lets you build mobile applications using only JavaScript. A React Native app is a real mobile application and not just a web application running on your mobile devices. Thousands of applications like Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, Skype use React Native. The next popular React extension is Flux. Flux is the application architecture that Facebook uses. Flux implements a unidirectional flow, which makes it easier to understand what actually is going on. Now let's see how it works. When we trigger an action, the dispatcher will get notified. The dispatcher receives actions and dispatches them to the stores. A store is what holds the data of an application. Stores will register with the application's dispatcher so that they can receive actions. Data from stores is displayed in views. Actions define the internal API of your application. They capture how anything might interact with your application. The last feature of React is debugging. React applications are easy to debug thanks to the large and active developer community. You can practically debug React codes within your browser. Now notice the small React extension icon at the top right corner. This developer tool allows the user to inspect the code and also easily debug it. Moving on, let's learn about the building blocks of React. Components, state, and props are the essential concepts that one should know before implementing React. They are the foundation on which React is built. Now, what exactly are React components? Components are the building blocks of any React application. React divides the user interface into multiple components, wherein each component defines how a particular element is viewed in the application. React components remain discrete and are processed independently. Another feature is reusability. Components can be reused multiple times across the application. This reduces the development time. Consider the following code snippet. A component is implemented as a JavaScript class having some state and a render method. State is the data which we want the component to render. The render method is responsible for how the UI looks and feels to the user. The next concept is state. State of a component is an object that holds some data. This data influences the output of a component. Every time the state of an object changes, the component is re-rendered onto the screen. Now let's see what props are. Props, a short for properties, allow us to pass arguments or data to components. Properties help make components more dynamic. It is important to define all the properties, their types and their default value. Props are passed to components in a way similar to that of HTML tag attributes. Now consider the following code snippets. This shows exactly how properties are passed to components. Also, detailed illustrations on components, props, and state will be shown in the upcoming videos, so stay tuned for that. Moving on, let's go through some of the things that you should know before you can actually start working on React. You should be familiar with programming concepts like functions, objects, arrays, and classes. One should also have a basic knowledge of JavaScript and a familiarity with HTML. Don't worry if you feel like you're not good at them. Once you start working on them, you'll get a good hang of it. Finally, let's go through the impact of React on the IT industry and get insights into the salaries of React developers. 
Statistics show that React developers earn way more than other web developers. According to Payscale, the average salary for a React developer in the United States is a whopping 91,000 US dollars. The average salary for a React developer in India is 7.25 lakhs per annum. Over the recent years, React has gained immense popularity and is being adopted by many companies. According to the data by Google Trends, React has had a better growth scale compared to other frameworks like Angular and Vue. Statistics show that front-end developers have wholeheartedly adopted this lightweight framework, foregoing other available options. If you are skilled and have a knack for front-end development, React can help you gain fantastic career opportunities. Lastly, talking about a few companies that use React devotionally, we have Facebook, Instagram, Netflix, Dropbox, WhatsApp, among others. In today's video, we'll be learning all about React installation on Windows. So without further ado, let's get started. To set up the React development environment, we need two things installed, Node and a text editor of your choice. So let's begin by installing Node.js. We can head to the official Node.js website, say download Node.js. So here you can see the Windows installer. Depending on your system, you can either download the 32-bit version or the 64-bit version. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the 64-bit version. Since it's already installed on my system, I'm not again installing Node. You can follow the installation guidelines and download it. Once you're done with Node installation, you can go ahead and download a text editor of your choice. So I'd suggest VS Code. So let's head to the VS Code page, say download VS Code, click on the first link and download the 64-bit version for Windows. Once you're done with the installation of both Node and your text editor, you can start creating your first React application. So for that, let's create a folder. I'm creating it on my desktop while you can create it in any of your drives. Let's call it first React. Now open your command prompt. Now you can type in the path for the folder that you just created. So say cd users first react. Now go ahead and type in the command npm install hyphen g create react app. Okay, so this command installs all the necessary react.js modules. Now to check if the version is correctly installed, you can type in create react app version. So you can see the version here. Now let's continue and develop your React application. Type in the command create React app and you can give a name to your application. So I say my app. Now this should take a couple of minutes. Okay. Once you've successfully created your application, they say to begin by typing the following commands. So let's do that. Say cd my app and npm start. This should typically start your application and here we go all right you can also open your application in the text editor that you've downloaded so let's go ahead and open vs code vs code file open folder go to your desktop or the drive that you've saved your folder in first react my app and i say select folder so as you can see all your modules have been imported you can click on app.js and start editing in today's video We'll be learning all about the most basic infrastructure of React.js called components. Without delay, let's begin and look at what's in store for us. So we'll be touching on topics like what are components, types of components, nesting components, higher order and pure components, and a brief description about component lifecycle. All right, to begin with, what exactly are components? Components are the building blocks of a React application, wherein each component represents a part of the user interface. Now, to make it more understandable, consider the Facebook homepage. The entire UI can be broken down into several elements. Say we have the credentials component, the sign-up component, the image component, and the logo component. Notice that each component adds something to how the homepage looks. All right, reusability is one of the salient features of React components. One component can be reused several times across the application, and this improves the development speed. Components can also be nested. One component can internally consist of several other components. In its minimal form, a component must define a render method that specifies how exactly the application looks and feels. A component can also receive properties from its parent components. Also, you'll get a better understanding of all of these when we start working hands-on. So don't worry. 
So moving on, let's look at the different types of components. First, we have the stateless functional components and then we have the stateful class components. Now functional components are typical JavaScript functions that return HTML. Now they can be contained in a .js or a .jsx file. Coming to class components, these are regular ESX classes. However, it's mandatory that they contain a render method that in turn returns HTML. They can also be contained in .jsx or a .jsx file. Okay then, let's go ahead and build our first React application using components. Alright, so I've opened my text editor that is VS Code to build my application. Also, I suggest you watch the React installation on Windows video to help you get started. The video briefly explains how to install Node and how to start building your first React application. In my case, I've opened a folder called React Component Tutorial and here in my source folder, I have app.js. Now app.js is the main component that gets rendered to the DOM. Let me show you that. Here in index.js, you pass app.js, which is a component that gets rendered to the React DOM. So app.js consists of several other components that can be nested. So as you can see, app.js is a functional component. And before moving on, let me get rid of all the unnecessary code. So let me delete all of this and return an h1 tag that says, hello, welcome to Simply Learn. Let me save it. And if you look at the browser, you'll have hello, welcome to Simply Learn. Now let's go ahead and display another message. Say h1, this video is about components. Right, let me save it. And let me check the browser. It gives you an error. So JSX uses a conventional rule which states that all HTML tags have to be enclosed within a div tag. So for example, I say div and I enclose it. So let me save and check my browser again. Here you go. So multiple HTML tags have to be enclosed within the div tag. Moving on, let's create a first functional component. To do that, I'll first create a folder in my source folder, say components. Within that, I'll create a file, say functional component.js. All right, so the first thing we have to do is import React. So I say import React from React. The general syntax for a functional component involves the keyword function and say functional component. Now you say return an h1 tag or I've already used h1 tags. So I'll say paragraph and I say this is a functional component. All right. Before explaining to you how these components are exported and imported, let me show you the general syntax for a class component. So I create another file, say class component.js. I again import React from React. The general notation is using the class keyword followed by the name of the class extending from the base class react.component. So going ahead, I say class, class component extends React dot component. Now the key feature of a class component is the usage of a render method. So I say render with embraces, I say return a paragraph tag saying this is the class component. All right. So moving on, let's see how these components can be nested into the main component that is app.js. Components can be nested into the main component using import and export keywords. So as the name suggests, export feature is used to export a particular file or a module and import is used to import a particular file or a module into the current existing module. So we have two different types of exports. You have default export and just export or named export. So a default export is used to export just one object, be it a function, a class, a variable from the file. And there can only be one default export per file. And when you're importing it, you can specify the address and use the word import before it. So let me show you how it works. Let's go back to our editor and then functional component. And here I say export default and the name of the functional component that is functional comp. So let me save this and going back to my app.js, I say import name of the functional component that is functional comp from and I pass the path this components slash functional component. Also, let me get rid of these unnecessary files here. Now let's define functional component in our app.js component. So here I say functional comp. Let's compile it and check our browser. 
here it says this is our functional component moving on to my class component it's the same syntax here as well i say export default name of my component and in my app.js i import it import class comp from the path and again i'll have to define it in my return method i say so let me compile it and check my browser it says this is the class component one unique feature of default export is that i can rename the file while i'm importing it so for example i can rename it as say fc and while i'm defining it i'll have to make sure i use the same naming conventions so i say fc again and when i check it it says this is the functional component there's literally no difference the next type of export is the named export or just export. So a named export can be used to export multiple objects, be it functions, class, etc. from a file. Now there can be several named exports from a single file. One hack is that while you're importing, it cannot be renamed. So let me show you how this works. Okay, so let's create another class in our class component. So I'll just copy paste this. Let me give it another name, say class comp one. And the message that I want to display is, hey, I'm another class. All right. So when I'm exporting it, I don't want default. So let me take it off and say export here. All right. In my app.js, while importing it, I want to import both the classes. So I'll include them within curly braces here. I say class comp, comma, class comp one. And then again, I define it here, class comp one. Let's compile it and run it and here we go here you can see hey i'm another class so we've successfully exported both the classes from the class component and imported it back in our app.js component one advantage of using named export is the fact that i can choose to import the classes that i want to now say for example i do not want to import class component here so let me take it off and here let me comment this now let's compile and see Hey, I'm another class. The second class got imported while the first class that was defined earlier is not imported here. All right, so next up we have higher order and pure competence. Now I won't get into the nitty gritties of it because they're advanced topics, but to give you a brief insight, higher order components are basically functions that take in a component and return a new component. The whole ideology behind higher order components is to facilitate the reusability of component logic. Okay, so let's see how this works. Let's go back to our code editor. Let's create a component in our components folder. Let's call the component click.js. All right. So here we define a class. I use this snippet RCE. Here we go. We get the entire format using the small snippet RCE. And here I'm going to make use of a button. Now say I use the tag button and I'll say clicked one time. Every time the user clicks on the button, the value gets incremented. So for this, I'm going to use a variable say count and I'm going to use the concept of states. So let's go ahead and define our variable count and initialize it to zero. So for that, I'm going to use another snippet called our const. And here this dot state equals my variable count initializing it to zero. So let's define the count variable in our render method. So I say const count equals this dot state. So every time we click on the button, the count value has to get incremented, right? So we make use of an event called on click equals this dot update click. Now update click is going to be another method that we have to define now. So every time the button gets clicked, this method is called. So let's go ahead and define the function. So it is update click equals, it's going to be an arrow function. And I say this dot set state is nothing but count this dot state dot count plus one okay and here we say count times all right so once this is done let's import our component in app.js so here again i say import click from components click and let's define it here so let's check our browser every time we click on the button the value gets incremented all right, so let's go ahead and create another component, say counter.js, wherein every time the user hovers the mouse on the button, the count value increases. So let's go ahead and do that. I say counter.js. I'm again going to use the snippet RCE to create a class component. And here in my div tag, I define a button and say incremented to, for now I say X. So now let's go ahead and add the event say button 
on mouse enter i'm going to call the method this dot increment count okay so once you're done with that let's go ahead and define the increment count method i'm going to copy the same code that i've mentioned in my click.js so i say copy this all right so one change is that i change the name of the method and call it increment count again let's define the count in our render method so i say const count equals this dot state and here i change x to count now let's go ahead and import it in our app.js so i say import counter from components and counter and let's define it here all right let's save it and let's run the code okay so as you can see you see another button here incremented to zero and every time i move my cursor on the button it increments mind you i'm not clicking i'm just hovering my mouse okay to learn how higher order components work we'll have to pass counter.js and click.js as parameters to give birth to an entire new component so for that let's go ahead and create another component for our hoc let's call it higher order.js okay so i say import react from react after that i say const updated component equals original component that's going to be an arrow function again and within curly braces i define my class that is class say new component extends react dot component inside let's define a render method that returns the original component with a modification that is i want to type the user i want to append the user before the actual message is displayed all right so let's go ahead and close the tag and return new component and let's export this say so export default updated component now we import higher order.js in our counter.js and click.js and pass these components as parameters so let's do that let's go to our counter.js and here i say import updated component from dot slash higher order component and here while exporting I say updated comp and pass this as my parameter. Let's do the same to click.js. Here I import updated comp from higher order component and here I pass this as a parameter. Now here in a higher order component, we've defined a property name and initialized it to the user. So we'll have to include this in our other components. That's counter and click. So let's do that. And here right before incremented to, I say this dot props dot name let me save it let me do the same thing here and say this dot props dot name so if you go back to our browser here you can see it says the user clicked zero times and the user incremented to zero okay so this basically shows how react implements reusability of components moving on our next topic is pure components now another way to create class component is by extending pure component from react a pure component avoids unnecessary re-renders. Now, how does it do it? It does not implement the should component update method. Now, you'll learn about this method a little later in the video. Now, this method enables re-rendering of components to the DOM. But a pure component, on the other hand, ensures a shallow comparison of states and props and checks if a re-render is actually necessary. Only then does it render to the DOM. A React component can be considered pure if it renders the same output for the same state and props. So let's take an example to explain pure components. So let's go back to our VS code and create two component classes, one for a regular component and the other for a pure component. Now using this example, I'll show you exactly how pure component is more helpful. Okay, so let's create a pure component.js file. I say pure comp.js. So here I'm going to use a snippet rpce that is going to create a pure component class. Let me get rid of this export. And here in my div tag, I'll display the text, say, I'm the pure component. All right. Now let's go ahead and create a regular component. I may call it regular component.js. And here I'm going to use the snippet RCE. And the message that I'd want to display is I'm the regular component. 
So to draw a comparison between the regular component and the pure component, let's create a parent component for the two. So let me create one here. I'll call it parent component.js. And this is again going to be a regular class component. And here I display the message, I am the parent component. To change the state of the component, we're going to make use of a constructor. So let's use the snippet r const. And here let me create name you can give anything and i say simply learn now we make use of the component did mount lifecycle method to set a time interval now don't worry about this we're going to learn about it a little later in the video so moving ahead i'm going to make use of the method and say component did mount and here i say set interval and the first argument is going to be an arrow function and the second will be the time interval and i'm going to be setting it to three seconds now within the arrow function, I'll make use of the set state function to set the state of my property. However, I do not change the name. I keep it simply on itself. Moving on, let's import pure component and the regular component into our parent component and then pass name as a property. So to do that, first import pure comp from pure component and then I say import regular comp from regular comp.js and here let's say regular comp name equals this dot state dot name and I say pure component name equals this dot state dot name. Now let's include the property name in both our regular and pure components. So to do that let's just say this dot prop dot name and here I again say this dot prop dot name and finally let's import parent component into our app.js component so here i say import parent comp from okay and here let me define parent comp so now if you look at the browser we have i'm the parent i'm regular component simply learn and i'm the pure component simply learn we've got the result as expected now to check if the pure component is actually re-rendering or not, let's include simple console.log statements. So here I say CLG snippet and here I say pure component render. And in my regular component, I do the same thing. I say console.log regular component render. Now let's do the same in our parent component as well. Here I say parent component render. All right, so let's go back to our browser and inspect it in our console. First, the parent component gets rendered, then the regular component, and then the pure component. After that, for every three seconds, only the parent component and the regular component is rendered. For the same state and prop, the pure component is not re-rendered. So in conclusion, pure components optimize React codes and also improves performance. So coming to the last topic, Component life cycle. So basically, component life cycle explains the stages the component goes through. The entire life cycle of a component can be divided into three parts. We have mounting, updation, and unmounting. So the first thing that gets invoked in the life cycle is component will mount. It is invoked right before the initial rendering occurs. Then we have the rendering method. Now once a component is inserted into the DOM, component did mount gets invoked. Coming to the next phase, we have updation. When a component receives props, component will receive props gets invoked. Set state is called when the state of the property changes. So every time there is a change, React decides whether the next component's state should trigger a re-render or not. To do that, should component update method is called. Component will update is invoked right before re-rendering. After re-rendering, component did update is called that makes updates to the DOM. And the last phase is unmounting. Component will unmount method does all the necessary cleanup and erases all the allocated memory and cycles. In our previous video, we learned about React.js components in detail. And now, moving ahead, let's learn about another striking feature of React.js called props. Props, short for properties, allow the user to pass arguments or data to components. A parent component can pass additional information to its children using props. Properties help make components more dynamic. Props are passed to components in the way similar to that of HTML track attributes. Now we'll look at this a little later in the video. Props in a component are read only and cannot be changed. One thing to remember is that props are sent by the parent to the children components. Hence the children components cannot make any changes to these props.
Now that we've learned about props in brief, let's go ahead and create our application using props. If you're new to this tutorial, I suggest you go to the React installation and React components video on our channel. So back in my code editor, that is VS Code, I've opened a folder called React Props. And now I'm going to create a component, a class component, and I'll call it class props. Dot js. So let's create the class component. I give RCE the snippet and here I display a message saying an h1 tag basically. Alright. Now let me get rid of export here and import it in my app.js main component. Here I say import class props. Alright. Now we define the class component in our render method. Let's say, all right. Now, if we go back to the browser, you see, hello learners, welcome to Simply Learn. Now, let's say we want to individually welcome every student. Instead of retyping the message for everybody, we can pass their names as props. Now, let's see how to do that. Now, we pass the name as a property from the main component that is app.js to the child component and render this onto the browser. So let's do that. So here, while I'm defining my child component, I say name, I save it. And here in my child component, instead of learners, I say, I use the keyword this dot props dot name. Let me save it. And if you look at the browser, we'll have hello learner one, welcome to simply learn. Now let's go ahead and welcome learner two and learner three. So I again say class props name equals learner two. All right. So if we save and look at the browser, we'll have all the three learners displayed on the browser. We can also pass multiple props to the child component. Now say for example, we want to welcome the student from a particular place. So we say welcome learner one from place X. So I can here define another property, say place and say place. Similarly, I can do it for the rest too. Say place Y. Now let's go back to our class props.js component and here say hello learner one from this dot props dot place. Let me save it. And if you look at the browser now, we have hello learner one from place X, place Y and place Z. We can also display whatever we want between the opening and closing tags when invoking a component. Now this is facilitated using props.children reserved keyword. Now let me explain to you how it's done with an example. Here, let's split the self and closing tag into an opening and a closing tag. And in between them, let me display a message within the paragraph tag. Let me say, and in my child component, after my h1 tag, let me use a paragraph tag. And here, let's use the reserved keyword, this.props.children. So let's save it. And now if you look at the browser, you can here see the message displayed child component. So props.children can be used when components do not know about their children ahead of time. This is commonly seen in components like sidebar and dialog that represent generic boxes. So let's go ahead and create a button tag and check again. So here I'll split it and add a button tag and say click. And let's check our browser. Here we go. We get the output as expected. All right, we saw the usage of props for class components. Similarly, we can use it for functional components. So let's go ahead and create a functional component. Let me call it I say import react from react and then I say function function props and here I return an h3 tag. I say this is functional component and I'll return another h3 tag saying hello learner. So let me save this. And let's export it 
export default function props and import it in our app.js again import function prop from function prop and here in our render method let's define it let me call function prop name let me give learner 4 and place place say a let me close it and back in our functional component instead of learner i say props dot name let me save it now if you look at our browser it gives us an error it says props is not defined so let's go back to our code editor and pass props here to our functional component also let me define hello props dot name from props dot place let me enclose it within the div tag here let me save it and now if you look at a browser here we go we get the output as expected so let's begin and learn what exactly is a state in React. Typically, a state is an object that stores the values of properties belonging to a component. Now these values can change over a period of time either via user interactions or network changes. And the state helps facilitate this functionality. Every time the state changes, React re-renders the component to the browser. The state is initialized in the constructor. A state can also store multiple properties. A method called setState is used to update the value of the state object. Now this function performs a shallow merge on the new and the previous state. Conventionally, a shallow merge ensures that the previous state values are overwritten by the new state values. Moving on, in our previous video, we learned about props. And although props and state dictate and control the behavior of a component, they have significant differences. So let's go ahead and draw a comparison between the two. Firstly, props in a component are used to pass data and event handlers to its children, while state on the other hand is used to store the data that has to be rendered on the web page. Props are immutable. Once set by the parent, they cannot be changed. State holds volatile data and can be changed over time. Props can be used in functional and class components, while state is restricted to class components. Props are set by the parent component, while a state is generally updated by event handlers. Now that we've learned all about state, let's go ahead and build an application to see the working of state. Alright, so in my code editor, that is VS Code, I've created my application, say, state. And here, in my source folder, I have my app.js file. Now here, I'm going to get rid of all the unnecessary code that I'm not going to be using. Also, I suggest you go through the React installation on Windows video to help you get started with creating your first application. So let's create our class component, say class app extends react.component. Inside, I have a render method that returns an HTML tag. Let's display a message, welcome. Let's follow the JSX conventions and enclose all the HTML tags within the div tag. So I say div class name equals app. We also have to import the app.css file, import app.css. So we save it and if you look at the browser, we have welcome. Now let's beautify our code. To do that, let's add some styling. So here in my app.js class component, I say styles equals and I say font style and I set it to say bold and I say color, say teal. And here in my h1 tag, I say style equals this dot styles. So let me save it. And if you look at the browser now, we have welcome in teal and it's bold. Now let's go ahead and create a class component to understand state. So first I create a folder and I call it components. And inside this folder, I create a class component and I call it new comp dot js. And I use the snippet RCE to create the class component. To give you an insight into what we're doing today, we'll display a message asking the user to subscribe to Simply Learn. Once the user clicks on the subscribe button, we instruct them to click on the bell icon. And finally, we display a thank you message. Now to do all of this, we're going to make use of state. And as mentioned earlier, we initialize the state object in a constructor. 
So let's use the snippet our const to create our constructor. Now in the state object, we initialize a property. Let's call it message and we display a message saying subscribe to simply learn. Let's save it. And here in our render method, let's say class name equals app and let's create an h3 tag and within the tag i display the message so i say this dot state dot message let's save it and now let's import it in our app.js component so i get rid of export here and here i say import new comp from components and new comp and let's define it here and say new so we save it and look at the browser it says subscribe to simply learn all right again to make our code look more presentable let's add in styles so i'll just copy the same styles that i've added here and i'll paste them here and instead of bold i make it italic and i change the color to say purple and again in my h3 tag i define style and initialize it to this dot styles so let me save it and now if you look at the browser it's in italic and it's in purple okay so moving ahead let's create a button that reads subscribe and once the user clicks on it the button should read subscribed and the message displayed above should instruct the user to click on the bell icon to do that let's first create a button the message that i want the button to read is subscribe however this message gets changed once the user clicks on the button so instead of explicitly mentioning subscribe here, I create a prop. I say sub and I say subscribe here. And back in my render method, I say this dot state dot sub. So let's save it. And if you look at the browser now, you have a button which displays a message subscribe. Now once the user clicks on the button, the message displayed should change to click on the bell icon to never miss an update. So let's create an event handler for that. So here button on click I call another method and let's call the method button change. Okay so this method should update the state and change the message and sub values. To do that we make use of a set state method. Now a state can be updated in response to event handlers, server responses or prop changes. Now all the updation can be done using the set state method. Now this is the general syntax used by the method. We'll however look at this further in the demo. Now the set state method conventionally enqueues all the updates made to the component state and instructs React to re-render the component and its children with the updated state. Now let's go back to our code editor and look at the working of this method. Now here I define the arrow function button change. If you are not familiar with arrow functions, I suggest you read up on them. And this is the general syntax. And here I say this dot set state. And inside I change my message to hit the bell icon to never miss an update. And my sub value changes to subscribed. Let's save this. And now if you look at the browser, when we click on the subscribe button, the message changes to hit the bell icon to never miss an update. So moving ahead, let's use a bell icon so that the user can click on it. Once he clicks on the image, the image changes and a thank you message appears on the screen. So for that, I have two images. I have bell A and bell B. So I drag and drop both the images in my components folder. All right. Now let's import these images into our new com.js file. Here I say import bell A from bell A dot png and again I say import bell B from bell B dot png. Right, let me save it. To display the image on the screen, we make use of the image tag. Now this tag has two attributes. One is the source attribute that specifies the URL and the other is the alt attribute that specifies an alternate text for the image. So here in my component, I say, I make use of a paragraph tag that will help display the image in the next line. And then I use the image tag. Now, since my image changes once it's clicked, I have to define a property and pass the event handler click that will update the image. So here, before specifying the source, let's go back to our state and define another property 
that is image url and let's set it to bell a since that is the image that i want to display first let me save it and here in my image tag i say source equals this dot state dot image url and then we have the all tag and i do not want to display any message so i leave it as it is now let's save it and if you look at the browser we have a bell displayed however now let's change the dimensions of the bell i do not want such a huge bell so back in my vs code i define style with width say 30 pixels and a height with again 30 pixels let me save this and now if you look at the browser we have a smaller icon so once the user clicks on this image the image changes and the message displayed here gets updated to do that we'll have to define an event so let's go back to our vs code and here in my image tag let's say on click i define a method say this dot image change and now we define this method here i say image change i make use of an arrow function again and again i use the set state method i update the image so i say image url is now set to bell b and the message is updated to thank you happy learning so let's save this now and if we look at the browser we see the image and once clicked on it the image gets updated and the message changes so finally let me refresh the browser once and show the full execution let me refresh following the instructions let's click on the subscribe button and now it says hit the bell icon and once i do that the image updates and the message changes hello this is matthew with simply learn and today we're going to cover react with redux so with our session today, what we're going to go through is going to cover why you'd want to use Redux when you're building a React solution, uh, what Redux is, what are the core principles of Redux, and what are those pillars that drive what you would do in Redux, and then finally, what are the pros and cons of Redux? And after we've gone through the PowerPoint presentation here, what we're going to do is we're actually going to go through and actually do a demo of actually using uh, Redux so you can actually see how this would all look. So why would you use Redux? Well, the reason why you'd want to use Redux is that Redux actually understands and helps manage the state of an object. And Redux was introduced to help address some problems that you were having with React. So the state of an object stores values and properties that belong to components that could potentially change over time. So uh, the uh, state could be modified by actions in your network. Uh, there could be uh, changes to the re-render of the component in the browser. Um, the object could also then st um, potentially store multiple properties. And then with Redux, it actually takes in and actually will create a, a you know, a take a, a large application that you could create with, app, with a React and breaks it down to several components instead of having this massive number of states you have to manage. And so every time that you, you know, an application would then switch from a current with a React, you'd actually be then changing the states. And this is a, a really big problem. Because when you're like doing that switching back and forth, there is the potential for applications to be re-rendered, which reduces the efficiency of your application. And so this is why Redux was introduced. So, you know, what is Redux? So Redux is a way to be able to have a predictable state container for your JavaScript applications. And it'll allow you to run your applications in multiple different variants. So whether it's a client solution, a service solution, or a native app solution. And then more importantly, um, or one of the key um, um, elements that, that I like about Redux is that it's really easy to test. And so with Redux, you're able to manage the state of your tool. Uh, you can actually use it to work with any JavaScript framework or library. And you can actually then store the, um, the uh, application and the components in a state store, which makes it easy to be able to manage the state of your application. So in simple words, Redux stores all the state objects in a single store and organizes it. It provides information about the current state of the application. Any changes in the state of the application can be described to the store by the user, and then it notifies any modifications made to the state of that application. So let's jump into the key principles of Redux. And there's three key areas I want to focus in. So the first one is that um, Redux provides a single source of truth. 
Um, and that uh, source of truth is uh, being able to store the state of your whole application in an object tree in a single store. And this makes it easier for you to debug and inspect uh, components of your application. Uh, it also enables you to be able to persist your app state for development and improve uh, faster uh, development cycles. The second principle is that its state is read only. And um, that's why uh, you're able to um, describe more effectively what's happening because it is read only. And this ensures that no events like network callbacks uh, would uh, uh, create an, any issues with the code and the re rendering of your application. And that object actions have become then just plain objects. And then finally, changes are made with pure functions. And so what do we mean by this? So we can actually um, take actions and transform the state tree with pure reducers. And we'll go into a demo later on to show you this. Uh, but a reducer is essentially a function that accepts an accumulation value. And then it takes back and returns that as a new accumulation. And this allows you to have a single source of truth value. The uh, user can return the new state objects instead of mutating to a previous state. Uh, the user can st um, start with a single reducer and as the app grows, it can then split off into a smaller reducers. And then finally, the reducers just become functions. So let's talk about the pillars of Redux. And so there are three key areas. We have the store, the actions, and then reducers. And then the store itself is the actual main object that holds the application tree state. Um, and there are four key um, states. There's get state, which turns the uh, current state of the store. And when we actually run the demo later on, you'll be able to see that we'll be able to open up our terminal window and be able to uh, get the state store um, from our terminal window. Uh, the second state is dispatch, and this is a, an action. It's the only way to update the application state. And here we have a action on a button change to actually change the state of the application. And then the final two are subscribe and unsubscribe. And these are uh, ways in which you can actually change the listener to the state. So an action is a plain object that represents an intention to change the state. So with actions, you have payloads of information that send data back and forth to your application store. Uh, so you can send any kind of data uh, that can go back and forth. And that actions must also have then a type field that indicates the type of action that has been performed. And finally, with reducers, reducers are um, specify how the application state changes in response to actions sent to the store. And so actions only describe what happened, but don't describe the application state change. Uh, they are a reducer is a function that accepts the current state and an action and then returns a new state with the action performed. And then finally, you can use combined reducers utility, which can then combine reducers in an app into a single index. So let's look at the pros and cons of using Redux because nothing is perfect. So a pro for working with Redux is that uh, Redux provides a single source of truth, which is the store. So there's no confusion over where you're getting your values. Um, this then leads to having a predictable and strict outcome. Redux is more stringent about how the code is organized. This makes it easier to onboard developers because there is a very structured way of uh, writing Redux code. This makes it also then uh, easier for the initial render, which allows you to make uh, the, your solution really optimized as an experience. And then finally, developers can track everything that's going on inside the app in real time. The cons. So one of the big cons is there's no encapsulation. So you're using Redux to test out the code and the, the writing of your code. Um, but um, the component itself can access data and there is potential for security issues. Uh, you do have to use boilerplate code. So this kind of takes us back to the structured code format. It, it is um, strict in its um, setup and it is memory intensive. So let's jump to the coding part and see what we are going to create. So before we jump, let's open our terminal to install some commands. Here I have already created my React project. 
you can also create a react project it is very simple just type a command npx npx create react app and then the folder name in my case it's and just enter it it will create a portfolio app for you so i have already created so i'm not gonna enter this so let's cut this after that let's begin with our code what you have to do is write a command npm react install first install react router dom and then press enter it will install react router dom in your system but before install this command you must have installed npm in your system so let's move forward and enter i have already installed this command but just to tell you guys i'm entering okay meanwhile it will take a couple of seconds. Meanwhile, I'm going to create a folder inside this source. And let's name this folder. And let's clear this terminal. Now, what we'll install is material UI icons so for that the command is npm install add material slash icon you will press enter and it will take a couple of seconds again more to install this command so I have already installed these commands in my system just, just to clear you guys and installing them again so let's start our development process inside this okay now let's open this app.js inside this I'm going to import react After that, I'm going to import the CSS file of this app.css import dot app dot CSS. Okay. Now let's close this. After that, let's create a function app inside this let's return turn if class name app after that let's close this yeah okay fine main part is to export this file so i'm going to write export default app let's save it now let's again open the terminal by just pressing control plus back tag or you can just go here and just type new terminal here we'll write npm start it will start the react project for you but let me write here okay it's working fine so let me show you that it's let's create another okay let's create a joint tag here then we'll write hello let's save it now let's open your hello from simply now. So it's working fine. Let's just delete this part here. Okay. 
Now we are going to start with our first component which is header. Inside this component, we will create an part header dot js. Okay, let's create another for folder. Let this components folder. Let's create another folder. Let's name it styles. Here we'll add all our CSS or SCSS files. So let's enter inside this. Let's create a file header dot SCSS. So I'm writing SCSS because I'm using this file syntax. You can also use CSS syntax also. So let's move forward with header.jss. React. Okay. Now let's write const header. Yeah. Let me check the okay, thing. Add a function which will run and return the as of dev. Create a dev here to make it look most important part again is to export this file don't export these files it will not run so exporting file is very important let's save it now let's import our css file which is header dot css or to add these styles inside the styles it's header.css yeah let's save it now okay fine let's open this let's give the universal styling here first so by writing star it means it implements on everything so we'll give margin of zero top or let's first padding zero box sizing for the box box Let's save it and see the add the pictures. So I'm giving every let's save it. Okay, we'll find. Let's work on this. Open your uh, .jss. Let's save it. Let's go to index.js. Here, as we have installed React on, so we'll write React. Okay. Browser. Route. From. As let's make use of router router and roots. Okay, I don't think it's look 
good let's delete this let's write router okay, this routes will write Let's save it. Let's see. Can't fetch the document part. Let's see and find the issue. Okay. Yeah. Let's save it now. Let's go to find. Okay. Project is defined as but never used. Okay. Yeah. Here we start later. But let's fix this part also. Let's let's, let's give it a let's add the uh, the home component. the home component right here the element let's save it now let's fix this issue Loud is not closed it's working fine now. Yes. Now everything look fine to me. Let's close this and let's work on the header component. Inside this header, let me just do this here. Okay, yeah, everything's look good now. After the header part, let's create another div class logo header. By the end of this tutorial, you will love the output of this program. So just be with me and you will see an awesome portfolio for you guys that you can use in your colleges or if you are a professional, the CV app will be a boom for you guys. So we are creating the header part. So inside the header, what should be the positions that we are going to use here so i'm going to add home about portfolio pages blogs contact these are the things that in a basic portfolio are mandatory so we are going to use that only so in this h1 i'm going to write my name let's save it or let's write here let's save it after that, I'm going to create another dev. Okay, not dev. Navbar. Inside this navbar, let's create an ordered list. Inside this, now let's create a dev of container or let's name it as closed. Closed okay. Inside this closed, I'm gonna use the option close class name as let's name this as close. Let's close this after C Okay, now 
let's okay let's just not do like this let's just close inside the header up dot js inside this let's add header let's import our header let's save it let's import manually here header from header component let's save it so let's let's see now let's send okay we close we haven't imported this let's import this Okay, let's save it now and let's see everything looks fine. Okay, it's not working. It's taking a time to install. Let's just move forward after this inside this ordered list we'll create a live component inside this we'll write link let's save it now again let's import this one also import link from the I shot it down that we have installed we are routed down let's just save it okay it's working fine now simply now x okay fine it's started to look good we have to add things here now inside this link part let's a link here define here too so and in after that let's write first part home okay fine let's copy this component and reuse this three four five here we'll write the home out about portfolio portfolio Write, write blocks and then contact page. Let's just save it. It is successfully compiled. So these are the things that we have added. Now the next step is let's add the Do is after this new file create a dev inside the devs let's name it a uh, change let's add the let's add the DVD UI icon here of menu outlined yeah inside this let's give it a class name menu 
Okay. Let's right, close this. Okay, let's save it. And exporting is done. Yeah, okay. It's already been added. Now you can see the feature of React. This is where you can use the material UI icon. Then you book outline and automatically it's been called inside this. Let's now just run this and see. This is the icon that we needed. Okay, fine. Isn't it looking cool right now only? Okay. Let's work on the header or CSS or SCSS. You can use whatever function that you like. Now, the first thing I'm going to Inside this header, we'll do it on the right top. Hundred percent. Display. Let's make the display flex only because it should come on horizontally. So line item center. We can change the position. Let's write position absolute. Z index one. Okay. Let's now edit. The second thing is header after that heading. Okay. Okay. Fine. Header inside this header logo will give it a margin of. I guess. It's fine for that. Let's see. Okay. Simple non logo, we don't need like this. We will make this like make the simple non logo here. After that, we'll move on about portfolio, blog, and contact here. So let's move forward with the code. Nav bar. Then zero and auto. So we are making this profile as responsive, so that's why we have used. So I have also used UL ordered list. So we'll make display flex and let's inside this only we have call for li. Let's get it in line style of none. So next we'll give it a margin. One run. After that it looks good. Yeah. Now after the ally we have used okay. Let's make it as one second. Let me check. So let's write text. So one thing I forgot to tell you that if you're using like CSS, here I'm using a CSS. If you're using CSS, you can just write after this UL tag or the list. Then you can use like this. You will li and inside that you can write or you can just write li and inside that these commands. You don't write, need to write these inside the ordered list only. Okay. Now let's add the stick stick position. Let me give you direction. Let's do added. Yeah. Let's see. Okay, fine. Let's write text decoration one. For that, 
matrix transformation let's write transform case color of this word is right on the let's add this add uh, what does it it's not local let's add it to partly there let's add dot changer after this let's just add this like this changer let's make the display clicks after that let's give it a margin of right of like 1.5 would be enough dot let's write min which was inside this I guess yeah so in CSS if this was the case like this we have created here like another class of menu in that we have written we have to write all the elements okay but we are using this as CSS so inside this this is the syntax that they follow okay let's write cursor pointer margin of right yeah one is enough you'll also get the source code of this in the description box you can check it out okay it'll be helpful for you just follow me throughout this video and in the end you'll see an amazing portfolio for you guys okay right close Closed. Okay. Just close. Portfolios are really amazing for like freshers to get a job because in these kind of projects you learn so many new things. Okay. So let's just save it. Okay. We have pointers. Yeah. Everything look good. We have to give like more space here. If that did this, then let's write. Okay. Everything look good. It looks fine. Let's add the hover effects. So the hover effects will be created in this anchor tag only, but let me just get it for you guys. So it will be more clearer for you guys. Let me just add a gold tag everywhere. Let me just copy this tag. Okay. I you will see it be very bold. Now let's save it. It's working fine now. Okay. Inside this anchor tag only. That should be fit by and the keyword name hover like this let's give it the border button three pixels would be fine solid in color and the red is my color let's save it and see what's the effect okay as you can see it's 
looking beautiful right just be with me throughout this tutorial and you will love the results okay so let's just make this clean code should always look clean okay if it looks clean it can be read properly you can read it properly so after this close we are gonna go with our code i don't know why this cross is still looking let's read this close i have written the function in but let's see it's not fetching it right i guess no issues i'll do that you guys okay let's see what's the issue here go to another file close close okay Right, let's find out. Is this cross is still here? Let's open the code. Let's make this Let's like this. Now let's save it. Okay, fine process clean and have fuel see the inspect this function is not paid so if it will be like this tablet mode okay fine everything is It's not coming right. Let's make this okay. We need to work on this part also. Okay. Let's see where the issue is coming. Okay. Oh, okay, fine. We have to still work on it. It's right here. Let's write this code again. Let's just save this file. So now, after that, then after the return, let's write a command like const active and make our app. So react function. So we'll close this bracket. It's looking it's showing error now, but state hooks function balls. Let's write it function now. Const show new inside this. Let's give it a double function and inside this step always after this will do is strictly active. This is the meaning of this. Save it and see the changes. It's showing you active is not defined. Okay, active is not defined. Really, it's not active. It's 
one error is still coming okay fine yeah two And updates, okay, fine, everything will look good. Let's see what's the issue here. Const show menu. Show menu, it's not together, that's why maybe it's finger. Oh, yeah, now it's fine. Compile it, warning, what's the issue now? see because finding errors and resolving them is very important for a developer increase your knowledge into the specific language you're working on so whenever you get any difficulties in your code just take help from someone google it and you'll find the answer I'm sure okay let's find out Show menu is assigned value but never use okay. Let us see the show menu here. Okay, fine. Let's remove the show menu inside this. Close. One click inside this. Show menu okay fine save it let's see the output now let's inspect it Fine here. There is okay. The tools fail to list load source map cloud not load container. Okay, it's trust. Let's make this as center. It's not in center. Let's center. Less no, yeah. Flex margin inside between them is the one is fine. The margin is fine. let's make it one point two here. In between them, it's one point two. Okay, fine. It's not the border box three person solid. Okay. between them but we can already do that let's this is working fine let's here write a function Let's just complete this CSS file now because it should be completed by now. Let's write media and set this max height. Okay. Max height would be fine. Okay. 
that function okay fine on this one transition is important second with ease okay no bar is down no bar active is also important that little detector it should respond with some actions so when I display flex it's time that flex direction should be column not row whenever we go into mobile apps and all it should be these are the little things that you should understand while implementing any project or something but it's very tricky also there's so many things that you have to understand set and instead zero and over like fine background color is very important let's write background only like this let's write white okay transition is important also millisecond please now it's fine let's complete this I think CSS is very lengthy process, but it's cool also. We learn so many new things by implementing. Okay. Let's give it a mesh RAM. Okay. Fine. Now let's see a little bit. Right, let's see put the margin. Let's see. Do RAM. Do that. Let's just open another one and end it. Tag will write font size, which is 20 pixels, color, which is black, but not like maybe let's write black only. Eight bolder, let's save it. C. Inspect. Now, as you can see, the mobile version of this is like this. Isn't it cool? Okay. Everything look cool and responsive. Coming back to our code. 
need this one. Uh, done. This is done. Let's work on the changes here. Changer. Yeah. Inside this changer, we will write. Then, okay. Let's write menu. Display. Display block to this one. Inside this, to do all these changes, let's just copy this from here. What if I just write here? Um, max. Could be 350 pixels. No. from here to here only so one and here to copy this just copy from here okay let's just paste it inside this everything look cool the next thing we are going to do is like create another one changer inside this dot menu inside this display not in line block margin right save it and let's see the header now isn't it looking perfect yes going forward have increased the margin from here to 1 or 2 to 25 rem so now it will look like this okay now we'll work on this main part for that let's cut this part okay Let's here add a new file called dot CSS. CSS, you can write just CSS. Okay. Inside this component part, we're gonna write another file inside this. Let's name it as main dot js. Okay. Now we have created two files here. So let's open our main file. Yeah, yeah. Let's import React. Yeah. After that, let's write const the basic function of React. It's just the syntax only. So, at this, let's return the dev empty. Let's write empty dev. Okay, it's not this. That's why it's. Yeah. Inside this now, I'm going to write. Yeah, 
but exporting default okay. now we'll import one in the file this is file of this so we're going to write styles folder path and the file name save it and look the same let's move forward with our app.js and here we have to declare that port name from components yeah let's save it now here we write main let's save it okay compile successfully now we'll do what i'm going to add one folder pictures that i have created inside this but let me just create one a basic structure of that let me just open my main.js file here and inside this main.js we have to write some code let's just go and the assets part here okay just do this and inside this let's add it inside the source or like assets with the source with the source but it's really fine yeah now i have added three pictures here to write more pictures so let me just copy some images okay in a couple of minutes coming back let's make this Inside this mean, let's create another class. Container. Container. Let's close this. Container. Div. Class name. Oh. Okay, let's just close this one another dev of class name text which will be used in this let's make it inside the p time Aesthetic and and designer. Okay, let's save it and see the output. Is it looking good? Right? Okay. Okay, so our everything is lost because make it inside this header also. 
so let's see it's the clip are going to miss so it's we are missing here it's a dot yes what do I have called for this one okay inside this header um, after this header let's just move here inside the header and yes let's out okay tiles are done let's just focus on the thing which is uh, creating we'll resolve it in a while okay so this is done let's just create another div inside this class name to add the icons so let's make this class name as icons only will be helpful for us only to write all the css properties for this so I'm going to add the CSS directly. So it will save your time. You'll find the code in the description also. And I'm going to show the code here also. So you, if you want, you can just copy it. Okay. Let's write Facebook. Last name of Facebook is also on. And it's okay, it's not that. Let's copy this from now. After Facebook, it will be link and Okay, we haven't called it yet. It's been material UI icons. So, yeah, let's call them Instagram, Facebook, Facebook. So, I guess, right? It's not been called up here, so that's why. Okay, and now it's the LinkedIn which is left. So now save it and you'll find all the logos here. Isn't it looking amazing, right? Okay, I'm sure you're loving it now. Here, we'll add the picture. So for that, I'm going to add, first let's just complete this part only. Uh, let's add in here for like, hire me. So whenever anyone will click on that hire me button, the CV will automatically get loaded. Okay, let's just work on that part. Let's create another div class. And if you will guys find any difficulties, you can just comment it down. I'll be happy to help in any way you guys want in this front end development. I'm going to help you guys. Oh, just talking in there. Good. H I R E U E. That will be fun. Okay, let's just close this bracket now. To this, let's create another div class. Class name. Buttons. Let's just add one more here. 
open. That's right. Uh, that's right. Connect on with me. That's right. That one we are going to write in that folder, so let's write C. C means okay. Let's save it inside this buttons. I'm going to do links. Okay, now buttons is fine. Let's just delete it. Delete that. Let's look. Save it. See the output. Oh, fine. I'm loving it. Let's just move forward. Okay. See, we have inside this. Let's after the Let's add a div class name. Inside this class name, we'll write mean. Inside this, we'll going to add the image source. Let's write. You. complete the process to define this part also so we are going to import unknown assets the spelling of that folder was a s s e d s in the file name that we are Let's write the proper address. Let's write profile to dot jpeg. Let's save it. Oh, it's coming very big. Let's add different picture here. Right, yeah, no work, and you would work. Gee, let's save it. It's coming fine. We'll make it here also, but let's save it. Everything's looking perfect now. We'll make it. Here, like here, it's, it'll be fine. Okay, let's. I've already added the CSS part. You can just see here. Okay, it was saying that I have showed you earlier just a few new things already. I'll tell you if I have added anything. Well, all look good. Two. Yeah. Okay. Everything will look good only. But the buttons is right. The image is here, so I'm gonna leave it. It's Seven. 
So some line is coming in the down, so that's why I'm doing this. A little up. Forty from here. Forty-five. Yeah, this is looking good. But the picture is here, so it's taking this part only. So it's right for us to just not intervene in this part. Okay, this is looking good, clean and good. Let's move forward. Okay, let's move forward and create a part here in this component file called section js okay inside this section dot js and let's just now come and create a new file called going start let me just write okay That dot js. Let's save it. Okay, we have written. So we have to work on these two files also. But let's just start from here. Let's. I've also added these files in an order. So let me show you guys first here. I've added these files like. Contacts comes in the second. Okay, let's just cut it from here. First, the header will come, main page, section, and then the contact. Like this is layer, right? Save it, cut it. We don't need this. Header file is done. Main file is also done in the section and contact. Let's start with the section part. Okay, let's complete this by just writing import react Okay, <coughs> let's Right styles section dot sections section dot CSS. Yeah, looks cool now. Now we are going to import for one more feature, which is let's write a note to. Assets and inside that it will be. Let's see the picture here. Let's add this picture. Yeah, profile. PG call this inside this function that we're going to write first let's write we'll just cut it const section inside this section we are going to create the function add arrow function set this return and export the basic structure is and the file name. So the basic structure is ready. Okay. Let's just write something. Let's see it's okay. Okay, let's just add these command here so that we can see if it's working or not. Let's
let's write class name let the, let's write the class name section only let the sections let's create another div class name sections container to that if class name section section image okay yeah fine now we're going to add the image with the source what was the source to alter this image and t then let's close this okay let me just see here this thing okay Part. Let's see. Okay. Yes. Let's write the index function now. That. Yeah. But let's just work on this part first. Then also we can switch to contact page we will complete this part then we will do that okay for now let's work on this section part only after this section part let's now add okay fine let's create div class name section the content that we are going to see after that h1 this i'm going to write my name a little description about me okay experience back in development after that that this only uh, let's write some stuff like script development yeah, like this only so we'll copy it from here yeah then you can write anything of your choice about yourself i'm gonna write java Python I'm also into project management and like that but it's like pro fresh UI and UX designer Okay, let's just save it. Moving forward, everything looks fine for this. Save it. Yeah. Okay. With one warning, let's see the issue. State is defined but never used. 
let's find out now that we have completed the rest of the part let's complete the last part which is contact.js part in this let's create the import react from react now let's import the css file here let's try command.styles inside the style part it's my css which i have created just now after that let's not add anything else it's fine for now okay let's create the functions add arrow function now create return div export default contact yeah everything is look now looks cool yeah now let's start with the class name contact let's say with contact we we'll love the result in the end i'm sure link to just to link the app i'm going to add the empty file path so it will get linked in the arrow back class name of let's just close this okay everything looks fine okay yeah that's the reason here yeah but still we have to import this link from react router down link from react router down let's save it now okay yeah we have to import the arrow back from material ui arrow back from at let's save it okay fine everything's look good now okay yeah just create another div which class name inputs where the user will input their detail or if anyone wants to send a message or something inputs after that i'm going to create one h1 which will be the head of contact me okay after that i'm going to create input types which is input type which is text and the placeholder which will come inside that with name let's close this and let's copy this few times copy paste okay the second thing that a user wants is email and the third thing that i want is the message that they want to send or something and the last name is messages because this box gonna be the big one no the name one is like the row type email one is also the same but the message box should be big so that's why i have written here the class name so i'll go and edit it inside my css file inside this let's create a button of send let's save it now i'm going to open my contact 
CSS file to add some CSS contact let's give it a width of like 100 percent height of 100 percent then the background color should be white okay, white would be fine after that let's write a tag inside that the color would be It would be fine. Yeah. Text decoration we don't need. So we're gonna write none. Dot input that we just taken. That was inputs right. Okay. So let's write here width of 60 percent height of 80 percent margin of 0 and auto and then display should be flex flex direction of column an alignment item should be center and then justify content center yeah now what we will do is work on the h1 tag right h1 inside this let's give the color i have noted down the color let's write it RGB 82 comma 76 76 dark red kind of color okay let's work on the input tag now let's give it a width items center Bedding should be 20 pixels outline and and the border should be also let's work on the last few steps of this application Message bedding bottom ten gram. After that, let's go on the bottom part. Bedding will give of ten pixels and forty pixels. Background color or just background only. Cursor always pointer. Chin. Top. Uh, yeah. Border of one pixel solid. We have to declare the color also. So we're going to give it a color blue. Yeah. Okay. Now color is defined. No, it's not defined. So let's give it a pink. But let's give it a little darker. Yeah, this is fine. Text under uppercase. Let's forward add media max height 
max width will start with 550 pixels inputs inside this input I'm gonna take width of uh, and then the input size would be padding and then 15 pixels let's save it and okay fine fine inside the app.jss let's see we have declared the contact page here let's save everything now it's successfully compiled so this is the final step of our application so these are the header part main part that we have created here so you can see the hover effect is it looking nice no you can just write a mail email id message and just send it isn't it looking amazing you can always improvise the projects we have created so you can also improvise this so with this we have reached the end of this video Instagram and this is how at the end of this tutorial you will see your Instagram clone okay so let's jump to the coding part open your visual studio code now let's create a react project for that open your terminal new terminal You can also open your terminal by just pressing Ctrl plus backtick. Okay. Here I'm going to write a command to create React project is npx create React app. Now the folder name I'm going to create as Insta. Instagram clone okay it'll take a couple of minutes to install all the files and libraries so let's wait a minute as you can see it's installing react react Dom and react scripts so let's wait a couple of minutes more I'm sure at the end of this tutorial you will love the output as we are going to create a straight simple and fascinating Instagram clone. Okay, let's wait a minute more. Okay. Now, okay, it's taking a minute more. It's fine. We'll wait a minute more for this. After that, we're going to open our folder here. I'm going to create a react project like in this Instagram clone I'm also going to create the login page inside the login page I'm also going to create the sign up page when the user enter their UID and password they will be redirected to the home page now let's see how our application is looking first we're going to go inside the folder that we have created so I'm gonna write Instagram clone now we are inside the Instagram clone let's open our folder where all the files are so inside the C users SLP here is my folder let's open it and see now we'll open the terminal by just clicking on control back tech. Here I'm going to write npm start to see whether our project is working fine or not. So let's wait and see the magic of React. React is a beautiful library of JavaScript. Okay, you'll love the output in the end, I'm sure. Let's see. 
So here it is the beautiful logo of React. Now coming back to Visual Studio Code. Let's install the material UI component of React. For that, I'm going to write a command. Let me just search here. UI can we need core. About it. Open this npm. You can also open this one. But let's copy this command from here. It's copied. Coming back to our code. Let's paste it and enter. It'll take a couple of minutes more to install all the files. Okay, fine. It's saying the other root folder. Okay, let's just see in this JSON file the icons have been installed or not. Okay. So there are so many packages here. The React is all dependencies. React even React Tom, React scripts and this core is not installed. Let me just again them okay let's write npm install material ui or Four point eleven point two. Okay, so it will install automatically. Here, I'm going to open this app.js file. Here, as you can see, just let's run this file now. npm start. Let's say it's working fine or not. Okay, it's working completely fine. Now, coming back to our code, let's delete this logo. We don't need that. And let's delete this header. Here we'll write h1. Inside this h1, I'm going to write hello from Simply Learn. Let's save it. Let's see what's the output. Isn't it looking cool? At the end, you will see a complete full fledged Instagram clone. It'll be awesome. Let's see Instagram clone here. Okay, fine. Let's delete this one. We need. Okay. Let's move forward and delete this one because we don't need it. Also, I'm going to delete this file also. Let's delete this image. Okay. Here, now I'm going to create components. As React is a component based library, here I'm going to create different components for this project. Here, let's create a folder called compo. Nance. Inside this components folder, I'm going to create a folder called login page. Inside this login page, I'm create two files as login dot login page dot js and inside this login page only let's create another file called login page dot css now inside let's just save it for now Open your login page just CSS, not JS. I'm going to write import. Right. From React. Or we can also write import React, comma. Here I'm going to write 
component. Okay. From React. Yes. Okay. Now I'm going to create a class of login page. Set this login bit extends. I'm going to use props and state in this component. Let's create a constructor here. Constructor. Inside this, let's write a prop. Inside this, let's write a keyword super props after this let's this dot state to get the state inside this okay now render this function to return a div let's give it Hello world. Let's save it. Okay, we need to export. Export. To export each file, you need to write export default and then the file name like login page. Let's close this one. Let's save it. Everything is looking fine. Now, coming back to app.js, here I am going to write login, login page and as you can see, it automatically imported the login page from components, login, login Let's just save this one and see the output. So, it's working fine. Coming back to our code. Let's delete this part. Okay, it's fine. Like, let's import React. After this, I'm going to Also going to use the grid system here, okay? So for that, let's go back to our code. Okay, let's let's add a grid here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this screen into three parts, like three to the left side, three to the right side, and six to the middle. Okay, as you all know, so the screen is of 12, so I am going to use this 12, okay, let's open our login page.css and let's create a dev, now I am going to show you how to create dev in a screen, firstly I am going to take one dev, inside this dev I am going to write grid container inside this grid container I'm going to add one grid item of excess size which is three okay it should not come under this it's inside this okay fine okay here I'm going to write some demo data. Hello. To just let you know how the grid system works. Okay. Now I'm going to create one another. Let's copy it. Let's copy this one from here again. Let's write the proper hello. I'm going to write from and 
here I'm going to write simply learn. Let's save. It's showing an error. Okay. Let's find out the error. Everything is looking fine to me. But let's see what's the issue here. Okay. The grid is not defined. Okay, it's fine, fine. Got to add the grid. Here, I have added one command for the grid yarn add material ui code as this was not working so i'm again going to add the material ui so let's see if it's working fine now or not Just wait a couple of minutes to see if it work that will be great so let's just see the instagram login page for now let's just log out from here okay let's just open this yeah here i'm going to open the instagram yeah this is how i'm going to create the login page so i have these pictures this one this one and this one so inside this sign up page i'm also going to create this sign up page and this login page okay so it'll be very great if you'll understand the process react is a very beautiful language i love react so if you love react do subscribe to our channel Post amazing videos on a daily basis. So this is almost done. Yes. Now I'm going to start this project. Will not work with npm yes, but let's just start this. Let's see is it working or not. Okay, fine, it's working. So, as you can see, it's saying, okay, let me just delete this part. Index.css, let's delete this, save it. Coming back to our page. Let me just. Okay. Let's just save it. Now, as you can see, this is taking what? This piece, which is from here to here. Okay. And this from is taking space from here to here. This big grid. And this simple learn is taking this much space, only three. So we have distributed this 363. Three inside this 6 we are going to work so coming back to the code now we are going to create the login page so let's here inside the login page.jss js let's add here yeah inside this let's cut it and let's create a dev class okay inside this let's create another dev with this dev i'm going to add one image let's write the source of it, that image it's insta let's write inst image Okay, this is not necessary. Okay, that's why it's not fetching. We have to import the image in the top. So let's write import. Inst. Just remember whatever you are writing inside this, 
we have to write it here also so from so this is inside the source inside the folder dot okay first it is inside the uh, instagram clone then source then inside that images now inside that i have added one image folder here i have added some images that will be important and useful in this tutorial okay i'll give the link in the description box for this project you can just get it from there okay you'll get all the code don't worry just see how everything works okay so here i'm going to write the code of that image it was 93646 okay it was 75f b26 SVG. Now let's save it and see the output. Okay, it's saying we have packed compiled with one warning. It's nothing. Image element must have an old. Okay, it's fine. We can do it in the CSS part. Oh, and boom, you can see the output here. Isn't it amazing? We can just adjust everything. Don't worry about that. But it's working let's we can add here like alter this image height width we can give okay now let's move forward and add the width let's give it width as okay we can give the width as and pixels let's write okay 450 would be fine yeah let's get the space here okay yeah it's completely working fine we can give the padding and all it's fine but for now it's looking beautiful yeah let's open that page where that yeah it's very down let's again log in refresh this login page okay yeah it's up so let's make it up only okay yeah it's looking very beautiful coming back to the code after this let's create another div let's inside this let's write okay we have to make the box so let's Okay, let's we can also add the image here yeah now we need what let me just see once okay we need one container inside the container we need that image of instagram okay fine it's easy no big issues okay let's write here again this copy okay it's copy and now let's paste it so the name so the name of this is not insta image it's an insta logo so what we are giving not right now let's not go it's fine if we can okay we have to include this inside here let's copy this import paste it here as install logo from images 75b26a yeah it's fine let's add the name Insta logo dot png. Let's save it. 
coming back to the code it's showing an error can't resolve it okay let's okay okay fine i understood so it's not insta it's insta let's save it now is it the same issue okay, it's the same issue let's search for instimate.png okay fine now coming back to our code we'll see instalogo.png Okay, fine. Everything. It's logo and star. In just a minute. It's not this one. It's star. Okay, let me just find. Logo Insta is here. Let me just here. Okay. Let's write here. Let's save it. yeah it is working but the image quality is very bad moving ahead let's find the another logo is there any logo insta is here we can use this logo insta let's try this one logo insta here Let's save it. Let's see is it. Yeah, this is also working fine. Okay, we'll go with this one only. Hmm? Coming back to the code. Let's start working on the file. Okay, this one is fine. We don't need this width. But we can just try this one. Now let's give this first div as a class name. So we can also give the CSS properties in this. Okay. So for that I am going to give it a name as locking page and main. Let's just save it and inside this let's just delete this one this 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 app.js no no and here i'm going to write login page in inside this i'm going to write display and then it should be flex let's save it Coming back to the code, let's see. Okay, it's fine. Now again, I'm going to write login. And we need for log only. Because it's coming. The next line, let's give it a width. I've already given it a width, so cut it from there let's write css in different page only let's not mix it here okay let's see so coming very big 
unfit it, I guess. But no issues. We're gonna make it work. Okay. Login page. Let's. Okay, the CSS is not working. Okay. I forgot to add the CSS in this login. We also have to add the CSS. So I'm going to import dot login page dot CSS. Let's save it now and see the magic of CSS with React. Okay. I think this looks good. Okay. Yeah. Back to the code. It's looking very slow. No issues. We'll wait a couple of seconds. Okay, it's not working. Okay, it's let's move forward and see whether we can add more features inside this. So we are going to add this logo here which is coming in here we want this that inside there so let's login page right component It is. I'm going to write. Okay, everything is look good. Uh, height. We're going to give height. Let's give it a height of 380 as it is as Instagram login page. Width is not auto, it's 350 pixels. Order of that box, which is one pixel solid. Let's give the exact color that Instagram have. Okay, let's just save it now. See everything is attached. Okay. Let's just see the Instagram one is looking very big here. Let's reduce the size. Look at one fifty five. Let's see the warnings here. It's still compiling. Okay, let's kill this terminal. Delete this one. Inside this, creating new terminal. Let's try it and start and see whether it is working fine or not. Let's just delete this. Okay. It's coming inside that only. Let's see whether it is fetching the login page. Page main. Login page main is correct. Okay, we have to add the files here to fetch it. Okay. Let's just copy this one. And let's add it inside here. Okay. 
first let's write the login page write component here help and paste class name as login page let's case sensitive here login write component let's just save it check the error here also for this image let's give it the class name login page logo let's save it now and see whether it is working fine okay let's hope it's working fine yeah we have created one box and this is what our instagram logo we can move it up let's open our terminal so let's write okay, it's fine We don't need this one. One for the main. Or one for the script container. Inside script container. I'm going to add one class. Two. have created one dev here yeah it's fine now it's looking up like here earlier it was looking down now let's remove this till now I'm sure you have gotten the idea for why we have taken this but let's make it like systematic yeah let's save it now as you can see in our app and in instagram there is this one margin on the top so let's open our css where i'm going to write margin 25 pixels let's save it yeah our app is also looking like the instagram login page right in this it started looking cool right okay let's make it as here as it is showing inside there yeah we have to give padding to this instagram we have to create this also so let's give it some space here let's let's give it margin top to everything so it should align same here inside the main also i'm going to give margin 25 pixels okay now in this right i'm going to give it a border which is fine margin is fine margin is what from top we need so let's save it this text align is center so our instagram will be inside this container which is center isn't it looking very similar to the original part now let's move forward with the next step inside this container I'm going to create these phone number and all okay 
let's work on this container open your login.gss js file after this let's create a dev inside this let's create another dev so there there are two devs there's some space in between these and this so it's fine I'm going to open this let's write class of login page IGIN written the wrong spelling. Now let's write input text. Inside the we have to use the placeholder. We have to use that placeholder. Like we also have to write these things too. Okay let's write similar input for password also input type okay it's not text it's type which is i'm asking let's type and the type of this is password let's move forward let's see yeah it's for username password you can just make it look similar to the original one with the help of what css right let's create a button let's write sign let's just save it you'll see one sign the button yeah like this coming back to the code let's write let's okay here we are let's make it with css let's have to give the class name Last name we are going to give. Let's name it simple only login page text. Type this. Let's copy it from here and let's paste it here. For button, I'm going to add another class as login button let's just save it and see the magic it's not showing let's see what's the issue coming okay we have oh, added the css and why we are expecting so many other things okay first we are going to add the login text and I'm going to write this three login page width let's write 258 which is the exact same height which is 36 pixel same again I've inspected these things so I'm pretty sure of that login button inside this let's give it a width 
of 70 only because the button should be small now let's see yeah okay we need to do some changes here also because it's coming outside of this container let's see is we have added here inside the container okay here I have done few changes in the dev now as you can see it's coming inside the container now we are gonna give some space so for that let's give them some margin open your page.css and here I'm going to give it a margin of 5 pixels okay also I'm gonna give it a border because color is very dark there I'm gonna change that solid and db 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 is fine yeah and this is looking good and we have to create one more which is login page sign in yeah inside this let's give it a margin from top as 25 pixels let's save it and see the changes yeah so now the color of this is looking exactly like the this one now coming back to the button part let's just add the here it will be great if we add it here As you can see here, okay, it's not coming inside this because we have opened this one in the let's close this. Let's first add the placeholder or let's work on the button bar. Okay, let's first add the placeholder, which is phone number, username, or email. So, inside this text node, we have to add this placeholder. After this, I am going to add one placeholder, which is going to tell us what comes inside this number, email, or username. Okay, and inside here, let's create another placeholder. Inside this, let's write password. Let's save it. Okay, let's call the email is coming. username or save it yeah just looking amazing right now coming back to the CSS file let's give it a background text after the border we are going to give it a background color which is a little mix of white so I'm gonna write hash F A F A F A let's save it now it's a little bit dark white okay same as this original one yeah 
moving forward let's now yeah coming back to the code let's cut this one let's write this Uh, we're going to give padding left to 10 pixel yeah this is coming fine let's just add one more which is border radius here which is 5 pixel is fine yeah no okay let's give this button some height after the height we are going to give it border radius for 5 pixels after that font weight let's give the font weight bold and then we need border for this which is 1 pixel solid and the color would be okay let's see the color here in the original one sky blue okay fine so the sky blue color is 039 f 6 let's just save it okay it's coming great but let's just things here because we need background color of this as blue so 3956 yeah it's a little dark okay and the color of the button should be white so we can just let's see yeah it's coming beautifully right whenever we add the id password here yeah okay Moving forward let's work on here itself let's give some minimize this let's add here body okay, we need to fetch this we need to, to add the dot background color and the background color of this would be a little let me just see the original one okay it's Okay, it's white only, so we'll write FFA. Yeah, this one is great. Okay, coming back to the right one, to the center, we're going to give it background color which is white save it now let's give this button a margin yeah margin from top because we need to add some space here so we are going to give it a margin of 5 pixels yeah this is the line now now Let's see whether it is looking fine or not. So, it's looking completely fine. So now, we are going to split the screen as R and all. So, coming back to app.js. Now, we'll work on this part. This R, login with Facebook and this everything. Coming back to code, 
here I'm going to create one div let's minimize this so we can see the output okay let's create one div inside this div I'm going to create one div more div and inside here we're going to write r okay looking cool i guess save it okay the r is coming but we need to add some css here so we can just make some space here so let's write this class name as login space divider let's save it okay let's give this one also class name as login or Here also we need to give some class name as login divider. Okay. Now we should also give this one class name because we need to add this also in the CSS. We're going to give it as if let's save it yeah let's open our css file let me just add the css here now here i have added some css properties you can see it okay so let's just save it and see this is the R now let's work on this one so login with Facebook forget password okay let's move it. okay so I have added one class of login Facebook here I'm adding the image where this is the keyword fp which is can fetch in the import login with facebook and then another div of class name login forget forget password and here putting this fp from the image folder let's just save it and see this is how it is looking we need to shrink the size of this image let's see the original one first okay it's coming very small but in our case it's coming very big so what we can do is we can go to our css file and reduce the size of this login facebook so i have added here margin top is let's add 10 and see the changes nothing is here so let's wait okay let's not make this as 30 here we can also add the margin right so why can't we give the width here let's write width 15 pixels and let's see yeah it's coming beautifully right now coming to this forget password we can make this as a hyperlink also okay but let's just give some styling to this login 
feel it's a little less. Okay, let's just do it now. So, let's give it margin right. Let's save it. Oh, the image got lost. Okay, we just have to give the exact number, which is 5 pixel now. What it is saying? It's saying this. Oh, okay. Okay. This can't be fixed from here. It's again. Okay, we have given. Now it will be fine. Yeah. Yes, it's looking good. Now we'll work on this sign in and sign up button. Let's just go to our project there we are going to add because we need to come out of that main container okay so here I'm going to create one another container let's give it a class name of login page okay Sign up options. Okay. Inside this, let's create another div class name login page sign in. Let's close this. Now, here we are going to write don't have any account sign up let's copy it and here we're going to paste that right now we are going to create another div let's give it a class name as login page sign up this let's write out sign up let's just save this one and see our page yeah it's coming up what we can do is Let's see what's the mistake here. It's coming inside the container, but it's not fetching inside this. Okay. This one is fine. Okay, the sign up button, sign in is fine. This one is looking good. Let's add it here. Yeah. Now it's working fine. Yeah. Now what we can do is we have to give this a little padding so it comes under this. So coming back to Sign up. The top is yeah. It's Don't have any account. Sign up. Don't 
don't have any account sign up and then now oh, we need to add get app let's first form this now get the app Let's minimize this, this one also. Let's refresh and it's coming perfectly fine. As I'm not going to add these data, we can do that, but I'm not going to do that. So, let's add some images like this one here for that. Let's write here open your clone, get the app. After that, I'm going to create one other div. That this, I'm going to add these images. Okay, images source store. Close this one to that again. Image source play store. Let's save it. Okay, we have to add the images imported. Just a second. Okay. Let's import this app store and play store images. Let's copy this one. Copy paste. Then I'm going to write app store. And here I'm going to write Play Store and the image name is App and this one is Play. Let's just save it and see. Okay, it's coming very big. We need to give it the width also. Let's open our code. Here on you, we are going to give it some width. Let's give this one 136 pixels. Yeah, and let's copy this. Let's Let's paste it and yeah, you can see the output. We have to make some padding and all. Okay, let's coming back to our code. Let's give this one sign up page or let's let's give it another. Okay. Let's unlock this one only. Let's fix this. Let's skip this images. Last name. Okay. 
as login page this one options yeah now let's copy this and after this image I'm going to paste this one let's rename this option as doing and here also we are going to let's save it and see it's the changes get in it's coming query really. the get the app is under this only so let's do something for that let's add here as load section okay let's this one inside this div is this one let's see it's not still in the background okay let's just do one thing here now it's looking fine yeah so we need to give some padding here let's give it some padding here also let's just copy this property only paste it Save now, it's coming beautifully. Yeah. There is some gap here, so let's add this margin or okay. Edit this TWING but okay this is a mistake i thought it's not fetching the right margin it's now fetching the right margin let's just from the css it's here right top save it let's Margin is fine. Okay, we need to give some margin in between the container and get the app. Okay, so let's just see in download section. Inside the download section, we need to give maximum padding. From here, we have given some padding, but I think so it's fine so let's write here 40 the login page option is also 40 but it's not getting the space I want so let's open this one again it's a login option login to Is this one margin top it's not fetching this one okay it's fine it's not that big deal so 
uh, login pages done so this is our login page and this one is Instagram login page so whose login page is looking more beautiful guys <laughs> I understand so let's move on to the home page open your Visual Studio code and here inside the source component I'm going to create one folder inside this component folder I'm going to create a folder let's name it home page inside this home page component I'm going to create two files let's name each of them as home.js and the other one is CSS. Yeah. Let's save it. Yes. Everything's look fine now. Let's open. Let's delete this. This also. We have fetched the login page. Yeah. Everything looks good. Let's create the port React from React, but I'm importing component. Okay. Let's import the CSS file of this port home dot CSS. Okay, let's create a class of home. Now we'll see whether it is working or not by giving it a dummy text. Okay, let's make the use of props again. Super keyword. It will fetch props and this date will show us the state of the program. Okay, fine. Now the main thing friend of you know we are, we are calling the class we need to declare the trender function. So Let's give it div hello from simple let's close this again need to export default file name which is Home. Let's save it and let's import it this page inside the app.js. Now, as we can see, we have already imported login page. Now, I'm going to import home page. Now, let's write home from components each okay let's save it and let's see if this is in the browser Showing some errors. Okay, my not one your components won't be removed. Either. It can't be fixed. It cannot fix the location of files. So let's see. It's making 
inside let's see the structure of this okay let's open this and let's see the source and create this component create okay this folder is created let's cut this one did here okay let's cut it now it will be now it should be working fine let's cut these files save it now it's working fine It is showing hello from simply learn right coming back to our code back to the instagram page let's see so this is how the instagram page is looking so what i am going to do is i am going to create one nav bar in the top this nav bar component which will include these all icons so we'll get plenty of space to add the uh, stories and the picture and this box so what we can do is we can just create one component of nav bar then we'll follow the same let's work code Inside this component folder, let's create another folder. Name it as dot. Now in this, I'm going to create the JS and the CSS file. navbar dot js create it too create the CSS file now CSS okay now coming back to let's let's open the page Coming back to let's copy this. Let's copy this and paste it inside bar.js. Let's edit the like nav bar or CSS component. Render, let's delete this file here. Export. Okay. Nav bar. Let's save it. It's an error. Let's see what it is. What should. Okay, everything's fine. Okay, it's right here as nav bar, so we can just get what is this showing. Let's open home page inside this. Let's delete the whole thing. We don't need this. Inside this, I'm going to declare the nav bar. So it can be fished in the single page. Okay. Okay, let's make it inside this div. Okay, let's cut it now. 
let's okay, let's save it now. Okay, it's fine. Let's save it. Let's create one more component. This components only. Let's name it as main component. Let's truly go with back. Set this main content, we'll create again two files. Content JS and main content dot CSS. Yes. Okay. Now Again, we'll go to home, copy this text, going back to main content. Let's delete this. Right, main content. Let's delete this also from here. Content. Also this. Yes, let's get the class name is here in content inside the page. Everything will be fine. Let's, let's save it now. Everything will look fine. Think it's done. Let's go to home page. Here, to call this main content. Let's save it. And in app.js, let's comment it down for a while. Let's save it. Browser, which one is going to find. In app .js, in app is in page. Page. Code. save it now let's see the bar and main contain okay so as we can see Fetch these files, okay? Let's open the let's develop each and every component like a bar and main component. Now inside this nearbar.js. Let's delete this navbar and let's create one dev. Let's give the class as bar bar. Okay, let's just close it. Now here, I am going to use the grid from material UI. Okay, let's save it. Okay, that's fine. 
okay okay as you can see a one component has been created beautiful let's create now create here take this let's give it a name as grid container inside this grid container i'm going to call for three grids one is excess let's size it two let's just copy this from here yeah well, let's just save it okay let's this we need okay let's Right. See, there is this issue that was coming inside the grid. So I checked, and the grid was not properly installed in our system. Now I have again called for this command npm install slash four. This f is denoted as forcefully, and again it is installing Material UI core. So it will take a couple of minutes. Install all the properties of grid. Let's wait. Let's analyze the this will be resolved. So we have to import this in Splunk also, and these icons we can get it from the Material UI icons, and we have to create one component of the stories, and one component for the pictures, and one component for this. Let's go back to our code. Still installing issues. We'll move forward now. Let's just add some text here so we can get now inside this navbar only. Let's import Instagram logo that we needed. logo as you can see it is installed all the packages and everything is installed in the system so now we are installing that logo for that okay let's add here Inside the images folder, there is a picture called logo and star. EMG. Okay, it's fine. Let's just get this one. Let's put 
this part. Okay, let's just cut this. Okay, okay let's first just see you now whether it is working or not. Still the error. Let's find out how to work it. So we have finally compiled this program successfully. Main problem was that I was declaring it in the curly brackets, but the grid should not come under this because we are importing this. It's not a file, it's a module. So we have to import it like this so the output of this program is like this this is the component which is navbar component this is the main component okay the things which will come under this are story part profile pick upload that part and here is citation part this is the navbar and i'm going to declare the instagram logo just give me a second Inside this, let's add it here only in the center. Let's go here, add the image. We have already imported the image on the top. That's right. Install logo. Let's just close this one. Let's save it. Showing the big Instagram logo. We don't need that. We can change it in the styling bar. So let's give it a width. Let's write zero pixels. Save it. I can add the styling to CSS. Okay. Now let's see. It's coming very beautiful. Let's just delete this part. Delete this space. Okay, just. Yeah. This looks good. Input text. Text. We need to add the search bar. That is the placeholder is what you know, guys. Let me 
its which is come into that box you will see now let us save it and see the implementation of this search box yes ok we can do the padding and remove the padding. Let's create a grid here. Them. So we need to change the size of people to three, 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 six, seven, eight. Give it three only now. Style set this and we need to add display, which should be flex. Okay, let's close this. Let's here import some image. Okay, one will be fine. Otherwise, let's give it a width of twenty five pixels. Let's close this, save it, copy this one. Okay. Another line. Fine. Yeah, let's go back more more issues. We need to do that. So one is home, one is sage. That search or find button. The last and final one, little right. Yeah. Now, as you can see, it comes the grid of the screen is 12. So we have used 11. Now I'm going to create one more grid here. Let's give it size of one, and that would be empty. Now let's import the images on the top. First one. Again, that. Okay. Name of that is. Yeah. Let's 
abstract frame. Also, the view thing it is frame dot as you can. And this one is React. Save it. Come back to the frame. Can't use this React SVG. Let's see. Let's see. Now let's check. Okay, it's coming beautifully. We can also write these names, but will take much space. So, as you have noticed, there is one file portion also, which is round, and inside that there is a picture. So, what we can do this? Let's go to a code. Let's see. Here, let's give class name. Let's name it as name. Bar search bar. Yeah, let's save it. Let's Everything looks fine to me. This grid is fine. Circular. Yeah. Now, this is the time we can add the logo to the page, like this one. Okay. Come back to the code. What we can do is we can import avatar UI core and say this there is but which is this one it's right here yeah now we have to declare this inside this so what we can do is we can write avatar source of the image dp we have to import this image the let's first write this nav bar image style okay and inside the style i'm going to Max height the max height let's write max height as twenty five pixels and then max where it's Let's give it as oh, it's not. now it's looking good. Excited again. Twenty five pixels. Just close this one. Now let's save it. As it is showing in errors, because we haven't imported the image so let's write dp from let's write the name of the image let's write 
Well, picture. Save this one. It's still showing two errors. Let's read them. Parse error inside this node.js. What's the error? But let's just create one more terminal. Let's kill this one. Okay. Save the navbar only, I understood. But let's just run this one. Yeah. Until then, let's write this. And this problem is going to be done. Okay. So, what we can do is. Okay, this this we can remove now only. The prominent problem was with Avatar. Let's see what can do. What will not be found? Chair. Find any error, just copy that and paste that inside the Chrome. On Stack Overflow, you'll find plenty of answers of that. So, our main issue is with the avatar. Maybe it's not installed or what. So, let's add this part. Let's read some documentaries here. Okay. Let's find out. Avatar. Again, it's the same issue. Now let's save it and see. Whether it's working or not, it's working fine. Yeah, let's just come in a little down and just in that properties, no issues. That let's give a little more size to it and let's see now. Yeah, on this one. Coming back to the code. Yes. Now, let's style them properly. These three. Okay. Coming back here. After this image, I'm going to give it the class name. So let's give it as image yeah, but we don't need like this image okay yeah let's just copy this and paste it here here and here, let's save it now and see the magic of React. Yeah, it's coming beautifully now, right? Everything is aligned, and you can see the nav bar 
very beautifully aligned now this is not looking very good this main content let's remove that first okay yeah let's remove this one let's now you see this is how the nav bar is looking isn't it beautiful right yeah let's move forward coming back to visual studio code everything is fine i have added the css properties you can see okay i'll i'll upload all the code in the description box you can just copy that from here okay let's move ahead now let's close this never css never main content we will work on yeah fine first thing first what we are going to do is i am going to import grid here so uh, let's remove this from here okay, and let's add the proper location of the grid Let's write here grid container inside this grid container. I'm going to add two grids. Let's size them as two and six first. Okay, let's. Let's write here grid item six. The main thing what we're going to do is inside this only. Okay, so let's make it a little space. Let's create here one grid. here also let's complete the structure okay this is looking fine now now what we can do is we can just add the size here okay two two is fine everything's look good now We'll start working on this so let's add here one dev I'll inside this let's let's add Let's first here contains yeah in the components part let's create two folders or components let's name it as status status bar okay and in status bar Again, we are going to create two files JS and CSS status bar CSS. Yeah, right now we are going to create one another component. Which is main page again in this main page folder? It's not folder, let's delete this. Okay, okay, 
okay fine yeah again let's create in page instead of this main page let's create a file again in page dot js as the main dot css okay come back to this div main page and the status page it will come up because status should come Let's just capitalize this. Okay, let's save it. Yeah, everything look fine now. Let's import these files inside this. First, we'll import the status bar. Um, Status bar. Status bar. Yeah. Again, we are going to import this page from you can. Yeah, let's save it. Now, if you can see here, it's just got it because you haven't declared anything inside this status, and that's why it's not fetching it. Now, let's just do one last part. Let's give it a class name as main. Content. container and this save it come back to status I'm going to import okay let me just cut this part copy it from the place Cut this one and here from here. Let's create copy this, paste it here. Okay, we just have to import the React components. from react yeah let's just save it import the css file which is important this is the status bar status bar dot css save it Inside this, let's write data bar and set this render function. Say also default export default the status bar. Let's just maybe we don't need this now, but let's one def status bar. Okay, let's just copy. 
copy it from here and inside this let's paste it let's do some modifications here main page okay yeah. let's save it here also main page and when it comes to exporting the file let's save it and set the div yeah now we'll see the output so this is our nav bar this is the status bar this is the space that we are giving to this status bar and this is the space which is the main page Coming back to the code. Okay, let's create one and we want to create one more class name of status status bar. Where all the story will come, okay? Now we will create that part, right? So let's create another div. Let's give it a class name status. Okay, let's close this. Start again. Let's there. So after that, it can't fit it. Let's save it. Now let's get class name. Let's take this bar status. Status. Let's run the source. Status which will declare the image with the issues. Let's create another div. Class name status. 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 Status bar. Let's just copy this few times. Let's just put the image. Let's add the image here now. Let's port. Status image. Okay. Yeah. Image from images file photo. Let's save it. Okay, it was PG. Let's save it. yeah isn't it looking amazing yeah we have to align it but you can see the status bar let's add more status let's copy this and add two three more here yes save it now let's see yeah this is looking really very good we have to align it into the center. Okay. Yeah. Let's come back to the code. Hmm. 
button let's see now what you have to do is you have to make this container that status part into the center of this main page you can do it right okay fine i'm going to add the status or the pictures here you have to add the container into the center on your own if you need any help you can just comment it down i'll help you out okay but now you have to do some things so that you can learn about this technology more now we'll work on this main page okay now let's create a folder here in the components as post where we'll add the pictures inside this again i'm going to create two files js and the css for the styling yeah post.css okay fine now what we'll do is let's copy this and paste it inside this yeah and from here we are going to give the right path post and let's give the class name post and then what we are exporting here is post yeah let's save it now let's import this into the main page okay it's showing an error let's see what's the problem here Import, we imported it. That's the reason it's showing this error. Post from post and then post. Let's save it now. Let's save this. Okay, this is not where you have to import this file. Okay, let's cut it from here. Paste it here now. Save it. Let's save this also. Everything looks fine now. Yeah. Now, how we can check this is working or not is we have to add here. Hello. Save it. It's working fine. Yeah, it's working fine. Now we can add the pictures here. Okay. Let's remove this from here. Yeah. Let's start working on this component. Let's remove this. Hello. Inside this first div, let's create the class name and let's name it as host container. Now let's name it as the you have to remove it after that, but let's just now to the better clarity of this program to make this okay. Again, I'm creating another dev again. Like this, you have to create five. Okay. Let's do it. Yeah. Okay. Okay, let's delete this. The next line. Let's create three like this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Yes, fine. One component we have to create there. Okay, fine. Inside this first header, what I'm going to do is let's see the Instagram component. Okay. So there is one image and the username. Okay. Got it. Let's okay. Inside this div, let's create a class name post and table. Okay, after that. Inside the another container, let's write here the avatar because we need to add the logo. Okay, so let's give it a class name of post images or image is fine. And let's write the source which is empty that I will. Send okay, yeah. Now, one thing more we have to add is that we have to add the username as we discussed. We have to add the username, so I'm gonna write post username and then inside this. Okay, it's not necessary, but let's write the username. Okay, in this component. I'm going to write the image, okay? Just for the reference, like this. Names and all. Okay, fine. So let's move forward. Let's import the avatar. It's imported. Let's save it. Yeah, let's save it now. Yeah, I think. Cool. Use the name. You can just change it after a while. It's not an issue. Now let's move to the image component let's inside this div i'm going to create the image source of the image will be post image let's add the width here width is Let's write six hundred six ten pixels. Let's just save it. We have to add the image for now, but it's fine. Okay. Now let's make the import the image. Import post image from images and photos. I'm using this picture so many times. Okay, I have been. Let's save it now. It's working completely fine. Yeah. So with this, we have created our simple 
for beginners Instagram clone. So with this, we have reached the end of this video. Make sure to like and share it. Let me just show you in the last how the login page was looking. Okay, let's just and let's show this. Save it. You will find the code in the description box. Don't worry, if you have any questions, you can just ping me down. And I will also add this part in the code in the sections part. We'll see the new feature that are introduced in React 18. The first one is concurrent features. Then we have transitions. And after that, the main is suspense on the server. Moving ahead, now we'll see the improvements that are done in React 18. Automatic batching, better rendering, and then performance. So, some things are changed like before, we used to write react dom.render. Wait, let me explain it for you. After we install react 18, go to the index.js file. There, change the react dom.render. Now we'll write react dom.create root to create a root and then render our app using root. Let's discuss about react 18. So react was released in March 2022. And you can install it with the help of npm and yarn. Let's move ahead and see what's new in React 18. So, there are features like automatic batching, transitions, suspense on the server, and concurrent React. Now, we'll start with the automatic batching. So, in automatic batching, all state modifications made using event handlers are grouped together using React built-ins batching functionalities. So, it prevents the files from going through a pointless rendering procedure. React 18 also features a modified version of batching called React 18 Automatic Batching that group all state modifications made by create root together. So, automatic batching is nothing but to do all the micro tasks together at the end of the task to save time. Let me show you an example of automatic batching. Earlier, the program used to render in each step, but now with automatic rendering, this will only render at the end of the task. So, as you can see in this program, this set is fetching false, set error null, set form state is successful. Okay. So, earlier, first render will be performed in this part, set is fetching. The second render is performing when it is calling set error and the third render is performing when it is calling set form status okay but now it will just read set is fetching set error and in the last it will render at only one time okay so this was automatic batching let's move ahead on transition so a transition is a new concept in react to distinction between urgent and non-urgent updates. In urgent updates, it will reflect direct interactions like typing, clicking, pressing, etc. The transition updates the transition of the UI from one view to another. So, let me give you an example. If you are doing a task and another urgent task comes in that has a higher priority, so React will stop that task and work on the higher priority task and then start the task again. So, the transition is done like this, okay? If you are doing one task and some other urgent task comes up, it will stop the earlier task and start on the higher priority task. Now, let's move ahead with this suspense on the server. Before React 18 was introduced, if one component of an app is slow, it slows down the entire app. Yes, but with React 18, if one component is slow, it will not slow down the entire app. Now, Suspense allows you to instruct React to send HTML for other components such as loading spinner before sending HTML from the placeholder. So, this server renderer 
will then insert its HTML into the same stream. Once the slow component is prepared and has fetched its data, React Suspense is a feature that enables developer to monitor the rendering element while the process is still in process. It then displays its fallback functionality. This functionality can be used in conjunction with the transition API with the most recent React version. It even pauses the rendering schedule to lessen the effect of loading by preventing the content from being changed. Okay, the render sequence is quite helpful since it provides a calm loading state while the user is still dealing with a network conflict. Okay, this is a very good functionality that has introduced with us. Since React 18 comes with a sequence, it allows us to designate fallbacks for UI element that are yet to be seen on the screen. Therefore, using the sequence tag, we could wrap a single slow component and delay the component loading. Also, you can configure a fallback to show a loading animation. So, this is how we used to write the code. But now, with the help of sequence, we are using the code like this. Okay, let's move ahead and talk about concurrency in React. Now, React can interrupt, pause, restart or quit a render in React 18 with concurrent rendering. This enables React to react rapidly to user inputs while engaging in the time-consuming rendering operations. We will also talk about the examples of concurrent rendering later. But let me first tell you, React 18 introduced the foundation of concurrent rendering and new features such as sequence, stream servering, streaming server rendering and transition are powered by concurrent rendering. As a React developer, you concentrate on how you want the user experience to be delivered and React take care of the technical details. Now, let me give you an example. Concurrent React can remove UI elements from the screen and add them later while restoring the previous state. React should be able to restore the previous screen in the same state it was before. For instance, when a user tabs away from one screen and comes back to it, we intend to provide a new component name off screen in a future minor that follows this pattern. Off screen can also be used to create new user interface element in the background so that they are ready before the user reveals them. Now, we'll talk about a uh, new hooks. So the new hooks are introduced in React 18. Let me talk about them. So the first is use ID, use transition, use deferred value, use sync external store, and use insertion effect. You can use all these hooks. Now, we'll talk about the strict mode. Now, the strict mode is more stricter. Okay. When using React 18 strict mode, components will be mounted, unmounted, and then remounted with a previous state. By remounting trees, using the same component state before unmounting, React will be able to instantly mount a previous screen in the future, thanks to the reusable state. Now, we'll see the changes done on the client, server, and library side. Okay, let's start. Changes done on React 18. One is client side, server side, and the library side. Now, we'll talk about the client side changes. In client side, render is now being created as create root. As you can see in this image, we are first using if you'll open the index.js file in your React, you'll see this file. Okay. In here, you will see we were using React DOM.render, but now it's like root.render. Okay. Like create root, here importing the create root. Now the const root equals to create root. Now we can use the root because we also gave the constant root equals to create uh, root. Now moving ahead on the second one, which is unmounted component at node is now become root dot unmount. Okay. So before we were using this function, but now it's like root dot unmount, then we'll calling the element. Now, now we'll talk about react dot dom dot hydrate, which is now converted into 
hydrate dot root. Call hydrate in React 17 and below to attach React to existing HTML that was already rendered by React in a server environment. Using this, React 18 will warn that your app will behave as it fits running on React 17. Now, we'll talk about the server side changes. On server side, render to pipe stream is now on the node environment and render to readable stream is on the edge environment and render to string is now deprecated. Now, we'll talk about library side changes. There are new features like use ID, using external store, use insertion effect. Now let's say you're using an Instagram application. Every time you refresh, new content is loaded onto your screen. You can like a picture, add new ones, search for profiles and do much more. Although it provides a seamless user experience, there's a lot that goes in the back end as well. So every application typically consists of the front end, the back end and the database. Together, they form the full stack. So what exactly is front end development then? Now front end development is the part of web development that develops and creates the website's front end elements or features. Now a front end developer in a sense is responsible for everything that you see. It could be text, alignment, navigation, colors, etc. Now the main objectives of front end development is responsiveness and performance. So now that you know what front end development is, let's look at the skills that will help you land a job. First up is the foundation. So first things first, to become a front-end developer, you need to start with HTML, move on to CSS and JavaScript. Now these are the actual fundamental languages for front-end development. HTML is used to structure our web pages, CSS is used to make them beautiful and JavaScript is used to make the program run and add interactivity. However, knowing just these will not help you you will have to learn the second important skill that is frameworks. Now there are several front-end frameworks that make development way easy. Now to name a few or the most important ones, we have React, there's Angular, Vue, jQuery and Ember. Now I'm sure you must have heard of these frameworks. React is a UI development library written in JavaScript. Although React is just a library and not a framework, its usage is rampant nowadays. React goes beyond simple UI and has many extensions like Flux and React Native for complete application architecture support. Talking about Angular, again, this is an OpenScript JavaScript framework based on TypeScript. So as a framework, Angular offers advantages and it also provides a standard structure for developers in a team to work with. You know, it allows users to create huge applications that are easy to manage. Talking about Vue, it is also an open source JavaScript framework and is again used to build user interfaces for single page applications. Now I'm sure you must have heard of jQuery, which is again a trendy JavaScript framework and an application development platform. It is leaner, it is fast loading and comes with features that make life of a JavaScript application developer more accessible. It is used more and more to be the foundation and the primary driving force of web development today. And lastly, we have Ember, which is again an open source JavaScript client-side framework. It comes with built-in environment, with fast rebuilds, auto-reload, and a test runner. So these are some of the frameworks that you're expected to be proficient at. Now the third skill that is crucial is version control system. Now we use version control systems to track our code, history, and work more collaboratively with others. That's why you will find it in every job description. Now there are multiple version control systems available in the market today. There's Git, there's Subversion, etc. So just focus on Git which is the most popular one and don't worry about other version control systems. Knowing these version control systems will definitely add more credibility to your resume. The fourth skill that is crucial is the CSS preprocessor. Now to give you an insight into why we need preprocessors, CSS is an old language and it has its own limitations. If you write CSS for medium or large size applications, your code starts looking messy. So every time you want to change something, you end up breaking something else. Instead, you can make use of a CSS preprocessor. 
Now, a preprocessor is a program or a tool that lets you generate CSS from a different language that is better and more compatible than CSS. So instead of using plain CSS, you can use another language that looks pretty similar with CSS. We give our code to a CSS preprocessor that converts it into plain CSS which every browser understands. That's the purpose of CSS preprocessors. There are many of these available today. There's SAS, LESS and STYLUS to name a few. And lastly, the most important skill required is testing and debugging. Now, a very important aspect of web development is to make sure that the end result is error-free, free of bugs and seamless experience for the user. Therefore, the ability to test and debug a website is another essential skill that a front-end developer needs to have. There are various methodologies that can enable front-end developer to make sure that the website or the product not only looks good but also functions smoothly. So although these are the top 5 skills that a front-end developer must possess, he must also have good communication and interpersonal skills. A good understanding of APIs and how the app needs to behave is crucial to make a good developer. So you must be wondering how can Simply Learn help you with this? Well, you could get started by acquiring a Simply Learn certificate. All you need to do is head to our Simply Learn page and type in Full Stack Developer. You'll get a brief overview of the course and what it offers. If it suits your requirements, you can go ahead and enroll for it. Having this course certification will definitely boost your resume. Hey guys, I'm sure you all have heard about phrases like web development, full stack development, front end and back end development. But if you are not sure about what exactly they mean or how they're different, then don't worry. You're in the right place. This video on front-end versus back-end development will help you differentiate the two. But before we begin, if you haven't subscribed to our channel already, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to never miss an update. Now let's jump right in and look at what's in store for us. So first, we look at what exactly web development is. Then, we look at the different types of web development. Going ahead, we look at what front-end development is and understand what exactly back-end development is. And lastly, we'll be comparing the two on the basis of languages, libraries and frameworks, skills, job roles and salary. So now let's begin by understanding what web development is. Web development is the process of creating a website on the internet. It refers to the non-design aspects of a website such as creating features and functionality using programming, markup and scripting languages. Developers concentrate on the technical aspects of web development such as architecture, programming, application integration and graphics. Now let's look at the different types of web development. Now web development could include the front end and the back end. Now together they form something called as full stack development. Now I'm sure you're wondering what they actually mean. So let's go ahead and understand them. Let's begin by understanding what front end development is. Now front end development is the part of the website that codes and creates front end elements of a website which are features that are directly viewable and accessible by the client. Now essentially a front end developer is in charge of everything you see be it styling, graphics, text, alignment, navigation, colors, etc. And he attempts and he attempts to improve the user experience to make it as seamless as possible. Now these front-end developers also contribute to the overall design and aesthetic along with debugging. Responsiveness and performance are the two main objectives of front-end development. Then what exactly is back-end development? You guessed it right. Now web development that occurs at the back-end of programs is accurately termed as back-end development. Now this backend development covers server-side web application logic and integration and activities like writing APIs, creating libraries and working with system components as opposed to front-end development which focuses on customer-facing services and programs. Now backend developers create code that allows database and an application to communicate with each other. Essentially, 
A back-end developer handles what you don't see. We are in charge of the back-end of the website, which includes servers, databases and applications. So now that you have a brief understanding of what front-end development is and back-end development is, let's go ahead and compare the two. So we'll be comparing the two based on five different features. That is languages, libraries and frameworks, skills, job roles and salaries. Now let's begin with languages. Now front-end development typically includes coding using languages like HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Now, as you all know, HTML is a markup language that is standardized system for tagging text files to achieve font, color, graphics and hyperlinks. Now, CSS is used to format the layout of these web pages and JavaScript is used to create interactive elements on the web page. When it comes to backend, the languages include Python, C Hash, Java, Perl, PHP, Ruby and some JavaScript. Now Java in particular was built from ground up to run on the server side. So Java is extremely useful. Python is also one of the most popularly used languages and C sharp language is the preferred architecture for backend programming in Windows environments. Now talking about libraries and frameworks, front end libraries and frameworks include React JS, Angular, Vue, jQuery and Bootstrap. While talking about backend frameworks, we have Express.js, Node, Spring, Django, Flask, JSF, ASP.NET, and .NET MVC. Now, front-end and back-end developers work very closely, so it's helpful to have a foundational understanding of front-end developer technologies like HTML and CSS as well. Moving on to skills. Now, front-end developers are in charge of bringing visual elements to a website as well as interactive elements such as navigation, buttons and anything else that improves overall usability. HTML, JavaScript and CSS are frequently used to ensure that a site's visual side operates well. So it's crucial to know these languages and a good understanding of JavaScript frameworks and libraries is also essential. And other general skills include a good grasp of front-end programming languages, the ability to create a responsive design, the knowledge of testing and debugging, and an understanding of front-end development tools like automation, content management, version control systems. Talking about the skills required for back-end development. Now, back-end developers deal with back-end languages and frameworks like Java, Ruby on Rails, etc. Now, back-end developers deal with languages like Java, Ruby on Rails, etc. to make web pages and applications operate. Now, it's vital to know commonly used backend languages and frameworks like Django, Node.js, Express.js, and so on. Other important skills include database management, framework utilization, programming, knowledge of accessibility and security compliance, and understanding requirements and ensuring data consistency and integrity. Now, moving ahead, let's look at some of the job roles for front end and back end development. Talking about front end, we have the front end developer the CSS or HTML developer, we have front-end web designer, we have front-end SEO expert, full-stack developer, and a UI developer. Talking about back-end, there's back-end developer, Java developer, full-stack developer, DevOps engineer, software engineer, and an iOS developer. And lastly, let's look at the salaries offered to these front-end and back-end developers. In India, the average salary of a front-end developer is around 6 lakh rupees per annum, while a back-end developer earns about 7 lakh rupees per annum. In the US, a front-end developer earns around 100,000 US dollars per annum, while a back-end developer earns about 121,000 US dollars per annum. So what's in it for you? We'll first get familiar with both the programming languages by going through a quick introduction. Then. We will compare React and Angular focusing on their performance. After that, we will discuss the learning curve for learning both of these frameworks. We will also get to know about the adoption of these frameworks and their application in the field of web development. After that, we will compare the community support available for each framework. Then we will dive into the industry trends and job prospects. And in the end, I am going to tell you which technology to choose but I will give you enough food for thought for you to choose the technology that suits you and your project best. 
So let me first give you an introduction to React. Now, React is a JavaScript library for UI development. It is managed by Facebook and has an open source community of developers. The framework was introduced in May 2013. It is currently one of the most popular front-end libraries for web development. Moving on to Angular, Angular is an open source JavaScript framework for web development and mobile development. It is TypeScript based and is managed by Google's Angular team and the Angular developer community. Launched in September 2016, Angular, also known as Angular 2.0, is a complete rewrite of AngularJS, which was introduced in 2010. It competes directly with React frontend library. Moving on, let's go ahead and compare the performance. Now, React's performance is greatly improved with the introduction of the virtual DOM and is generally better than that of Angular. React uses the concept of virtual DOM that puts less load on the browser. React was released with the USP of being faster than other frameworks available. Furthermore, since the data binding process is unidirectional, bindings are not assigned watchers as in the case of Angular. When it comes to Angular, it performs worse, especially in complex and dynamic applications. The performance of Angular apps is negatively affected by bidirectional data binding. Angular uses traditional DOM that updates the whole web page, even if a single element is changed. However, the most recent update of Angular has greatly improved its performance and it does not lose to React anymore. So moving ahead, let me give you a brief insight into the learning curve. React is a library and not a framework. It is quite simple to understand if you're familiar with JavaScript. However, it takes time to learn how to set up a project properly. So you need to learn the Redux library, which is used in more than half of React applications for state management. React depends on other libraries to add functionality. Constant framework updates also require additional effort from the developer. Complex to understand. Some complicated features are embedded into the framework core, which means that the developer cannot avoid learning and using them. Angular itself is a huge library, so initial learning effort is worth it since you probably won't have to learn other libraries like React. Moving ahead, let's look at the community support. React framework is one of the most popular JavaScript frameworks worldwide. It has larger community support and you may face a lack of documentation at times. The community support makes up for the lack in documentation. When it comes to Angular, even though Angular was released before, its adoption is lesser when compared to React. Comparatively, it has a smaller community support. Documentation is on point and definitely better in the case of Angular. Also, the community support has improved over the few years. Moving on, let's look at adoption and application. React was released in May 2013. React is more popularly adopted by developers due to its simplicity. It is actively used by companies like Facebook, Twitter, Netflix, Airbnb, and many others. Now here, New York Times is one of the many popular websites built using React. Every new section acts as a separate component. So if any one of the component updates, the entire web page doesn't have to reload, making the web app feel much faster and smoother. This is just to give you a brief example. When it comes to Angular, it was released in October 2010. Even though it is improved now, Developers used to ignore Angular due to its complexity at the time of its release. Angular is used by Google, Apple, Nike, McDonald's, and other companies. Now, Gmail is one of the many popular websites built using Angular. Only the initial loading takes time. But after that, everything is so smooth because it is preloaded onto the web browser. Similarity of React and Angular in the last five years. We can clearly make out that React's popularity is increasing over time, while Angular's popularity is more of a straight line. Moving on to job trends, a React developer's average salary in the United States is around $91,000 per annum. 
In India, the average salary of a react developer is around 7.35 lakhs per annum. When it comes to Angular, an average salary of an Angular developer in the US is around 73,000 US dollars. When it comes to India, the average salary is around 4.88 lakhs per annum. So in conclusion, Angular is a full-fledged mobile and web development framework. React is a library only for UI development, which can be turned into a full-fledged solution with the help of additional libraries. React seems simpler at first sight and it takes lesser time to start working on a React project. However, that simplicity as the main advantage of React is neutralized because you have to learn to work with additional frameworks and tools. Angular itself is more complex and takes quite some time to master. Yet, it is a powerful tool that offers a holistic web development experience and once you learn how to work with it, you reap the fruits. Now, there is no better framework. Both are updated continuously to keep up with the competitor. For instance, while React was believed to win because of its virtual DOM, Angular equaled the score by implementing change detection. In the end, Angular versus React is all a matter of personal preference, a matter of skills and habits. As a beginner in programming, you would probably benefit more from starting with React. As an experienced developer, you just keep working with what you know better. We'll talk about the differences between React.js and Next.js. As many people think that React and Next.js works the same, we'll compare React and Next.js and how exactly they work. But before we begin, if you haven't subscribed to our channel already, make sure to hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon so you will get all the updates from Simply Learn. Before we jump to the video, do you know, according to Glassdoor, the average salary of a full stack developer in US is 70,000 US dollar per annum and it can go up to $125 per annum. In fact, by 2024, there will be 27% increase in the jobs for developers according to the US Bureau of Labor and Statistics. So now is the best time to start picking up your knowledge needed to get started in this career. If you want to become a software developer, consider the course on Full Stack Developer, Mean Stack by Simply Learn, and master those necessary skills. Check out the link in the description box for more details. So now, I would like to ask you guys one question. So, is React a framework or a library? Pause this video and comment in the comment section below with the correct answer. So first, we'll start with what React.js and Next.js is. After that, we'll see the differences between React and Next.js. We will cover the differences between in terms of performance, development cost, community and many more. Moving ahead, we'll talk about the features of React and Next.js and then we will see where Next and React.js are used. So without further ado, let's begin. So what is React.js? React is a JavaScript library that builds fast, interactive mobile and web applications. It's an open source, reusable component based front end library of JavaScript. React is a combination of HTML and JavaScript. It provides a robust and opinionated way to build modern application interface. So the component that user view and interact with on screen are referred to as a user interface. React is a library that offers helpful UI building compatibilities. Still, it is up to the developers to use those functions in their application. On the other hand, it takes work to create a whole React application from scratch. For typical application requirements, developers spend time to configuring tools and developing new solutions. After much anticipation, developer created a framework of React, the Next.js. Let's see what Next.js is. So Next.js is an open source web framework created by Vercel. Next.js enables React based web applications with server side rendering and generating static websites. In addition, Next.js offers additional structures, features and optimization for your application. Next.js take care of the tooling and setting required for React.js. Now let's see the differences between React.js and Next.js. If you use Next.js and React for your development project, you will find many perks and drawbacks of using those React and JavaScript projects. However, 
These critical front-end development tools offer a seamless and engaging web development experience. However, they have different learning curves, although they both are easy to learn. Now, let's see the performance on React and Next.js. Now, performance is where Next.js and React.js diverge most. The server-side rendering and static generation of Next.js applications makes them incredibly quick. They work because of numerous performance enhancing features such as image optimization. Because of this, using Next.js for your project will improve the efficiency of the development by engaging automatic server rendering and code splitting. Additionally, SSR is crucial for improved app performance. However, a few things rule out in this decision of React. Although it allows client-side rendering, this is insufficient for creating high performance application. Now we'll see the difference between the documentation of React and Next.js. Moving ahead, excellent documentation may make it simple for you to utilize the tools for any software project. Identify the best library to employ and more. Both React and Next.js have excellent documentation options. The learn by doing documentation in Next.js guide you through component constructions and routing. A similar setup exists for React also with multiple tutorials outlining the fundamentals. Now, let's move on to the server-side rendering. Server-side rendering SSR, a unique functionality provided by Next.js. It gathers data and fulfills each request when you have to offer a distinct presentation to various customers. Server-side rendering is not supported by default in React, although it can be enabled. With the server and configuration of your choice, SSR can be integrated, but it requires more effort. Also, it's possible that developers won't support this in future versions. Now, let's move on to the developer community. We'll talk about the community that developer has in React and Next.js. So, you should be aware that any framework or library you choose will have a developer community that may offer you proper answers of any issues you run into in the cutthroat businesses. React has a fantastic developer community that is active in sharing solutions via blogs, tutorials, videos and other platforms. We do have so many resources on React. You can check out our React full course on the Simply Learn page. Moving ahead, you will find so many React docs and live users on Stack Overflow also. On the other hand, Next.js has traditional exercises compared to other options, but it has more GitHub interactions. Developer in the open source community are accessible and engaged in Next.js. Community wise, I would say excellent developer experience is offered by both Next.js and React.js. Now let's move on to the configuration. Another difference between React and Next.js you should consider is configuration. React could offer better support for configuration unless you disconnect from the standard create React app, you won't be able to change the setups. Hence, you will need to use what's already set up and configured in CRAs, read scripts. On the other hand, everything is configured with Next.js. The Next.js templates allow you to configure files such as bbl and test.config. Now let's move on to the maintenance. Both Next.js and React.js have somewhat opinionated CRAs in this circumstance. They are well maintained and release updates frequently. All you have to do is now is to keep up with the new updates. So it's an amazing features on both React and Next.js. Let's see the development cost of React and Next.js. Next.js and React do not make into the top paying innovation list. Furthermore, they both are open source. As a result, building an application based on these technologies will be relatively inexpensive. Now, let's see the features of React and Next.js. As we know, Next.js uses React to develop single page application. Here are the features you can leverage to create ready to go application by using Next.js. So some of them are server side rendering, static export, pre-rendering, automatic build size optimization. While talking about React, it offers routing and state management patterns with libraries like Redux. 
React can be used to customize any project. Now, let's see where React.js is used. React is used in social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, and economy platforms like Airbnb, Lyft, User, I repeat, Uber. Media platforms like Yahoo, online video streaming platforms like Netflix, SaaS tools like SendGrid and Zapper Envision app. Now, we'll see where Next.js is used. Next.js is used to develop e-commerce website, marketing websites and landing page because it's a static site generator. Well, let's go ahead with the next area that is called working with React.js interview questions. Now, as we know it, React.js is as important as like in other tools which you've already has seen. So what is the JSX here? JSX called JavaScript syntax extension. Okay. So this syntax extension to the JavaScript in React.js is in the way how you express to bind JS and HTML together to result a JSX content. So by using JSX, you can write a HTML structure in the same file that contains the JavaScript code. That is something more innovative way because of that React.js is creating a more buzz in the market. So JSX actually helps to making code more easy to understand and debug and avoids a lot of boilerplate code. Okay, inside the DOM structure. Now the next thing is what is the virtual DOM? See the virtual DOM is representing a DOM in a memory. Okay, that is called virtual DOM. So manipulating the real DOM is much more slower and costly affair. Okay, because you need to repaint the DOM over and over the period of time when the user changes few things. So when the state change, virtual DOM changes and only the objects which are in real DOM, okay, update instead of updating the entire object. So that makes your page to be load far more faster. Okay, so in virtual DOM, what happens? This is the real DOM, this is a virtual DOM. So the orange color portions which you are seeing, that is basically the changes which has been made. Okay, these are called changed object. Okay, so virtual DOM is basically compare it's to the previous state and understand which area it needs to send for the updates and avoid the other areas. Okay, that's what this virtual DOM really works. So what are React extension? React extensions are many, like you talk about like in Flux, it is a third party tool which is responsible to attach the state management feature. You talk about React Native which is responsible to develop the hybrid mobile applications in JavaScript. So these are two very popular and there are many more which are available. Okay, so like you talk about architectural support, you talk about server side rendering, Okay, so Redux and there are a lot many other tools are also available. So what is an event in React and how you're going to create that? So React is basically offering the ideas of handling the event very fairly easy. So that you talk about clicking anything, you talk about taking your mouse somewhere. So these kind of options generate an event. So for that we typically say alert and you click on this render you click on this button in a curly braces you call the function to trigger to event now what are the components in react so friends react components are nothing but a call view okay like a complex view can be divided into the smaller portions a complex ui can be distributed further to create more better and reusable views clear so it splits the user interface into the independent pieces of code which can be developed and joins later on. Okay, so that's how you define the component in Ang React. So in Angular and React, in both the areas, the word component is very much used. So the component meaning is very simple. You talk about a view. So what is the state in a React? So state is React is nothing but is the one which identify what was and what is now okay which stores the value for the specific period of time which changes and react is basically detecting those so it is changing because of some actions either taken by the users or by the applications okay so it keep tracking about all those states what it was there like in i'm talking about an incrementing encounter 
so that is also the state a variable there okay so the state object is always initialized in the constructor so it can contain the multiple properties so this dot set state is used to change the value of the state object and set state is responsible to perform the shallow merge between the new state and the previous state now the state holds the data that a component renders to the web page certainly because every time the state changes so it needs to be stored somewhere so this is how the state is accessed as you can see this example here in the constructor we are defining the super props and the state is being initialized and you're rendering the states there are three different steps are involved initialize the state render the state and update the states what is a higher order component and pure component in react higher components are the component which are typically a function okay that takes a component and return a new component to you by manipulating few things they're basically designed for the reusing okay so the higher order components are typically a function that takes a component and return a new component okay so to, in order to perform some reusability a pure components are the components okay is a variation of react component that doesn't that does a shallow comparison of props and state okay shallow comparison basically checks what the equality are we clear now so that's what the main job going ahead what do you implement and how do you implement react routing so to implement a react routing react routing also comes with inbuilt uh, react modules and that particular module need to import it so here we define the react modules by offering the route path where you have a call left hand side is the name and the right hand side is a component which you would like to deliver it now so this brings us to the end of this full course on react js for 2023 we hope you had a lot to learn and if you have any suggestions or doubt please write them down in the comment section below thank you so much for tuning in today and happy learning Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.